College Football celebrates its centennial year on ABC, the number one network for sports. Saturday, October the 11th, 1969, the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Today marks the first time this season that two unbeaten teams, both ranked in the top ten, will meet as the Sooners of Oklahoma, led by Heisman Trophy candidate Steve Owens, face Darrell Royal's dazzling triple option offense, which has made Texas the second-ranked team in the nation. College football today is brought to you by... Firestone, the strong tire with exclusive triple strength construction. And by the Lincoln National Life Insurance Company. Get complete financial planning in the Lincoln hat. The flag of the Lone Star State of Texas flies proudly over the Cotton Bowl in Dallas today, and we of ABC Sports are proud, too, to be on hand for the annual battle between the football teams of the universities of Texas and Oklahoma here in the Cotton Bowl. This is a so-called neutral field. Each school gets exactly one half of the 72,000 precious tickets. And for the 24th consecutive year, this game is a complete sellout. We have a warm, sunny, and very windy day for the 64th renewal of this great rivalry in college football. I'm Bill Fleming. And we'd like to relive with you right now some of the memorable moments in this great tradition of college football that began between Texas and Oklahoma back in the year of 1900. In all, there have been 63 games played. Texas holds the upper hand in those games, winning 40. Oklahoma has 21 wins and two games that wound up in ties. There have been so many great names that have played in the series, it's hard to single out a few, but... Let's try. Let's go back to 1950. Oklahoma was ranked number one of the nation, was on a winning streak of 23 games in a row. Early in the game, Leon Heath of Oklahoma finds a hole, breaks into the open, and he is finally hauled down, out of bounds, on the Texas two-yard line. And from there, Billy Vessels, remember him, plunges across the Texas goal line for the Sooners' first TD. The kick is good, and a 7-0 Oklahoma lead. In the second quarter, first down on the Oklahoma 20, Texas quarterback Benny Tompkins sends Byron Townsend in for the touchdown. The extra point is good. It's tied 7-7 at the half. In the fourth quarter, Sooners Dick Peatley fires a pass. It's intercepted by Bobby Dillon of Texas. And watch him go all the way for the Longhorns. He scored the TD, but they missed the point. Texas led 13-7. Texas tried ball control, but a fumble by a putter, and Oklahoma takes over the football first and goal to go inside the 10. Two plays later, a determined Billy Vessels goes in to tie the score. And now the all-important extra point. Jim Weatherall back. He makes it good for a 14-13 win for the Sooners, their 24th straight. Well, Texas got revenge 9-7 to the next year, but then the Sooners started rolling again. They won six straight very convincing scores, and they came up to the 1958 game. Former Oklahoma star Darrell Royal in his second year as head coach of Texas. Rainer Ramirez passing to George Blanche for a touchdown, a two-point conversion, made a Texas 8, Oklahoma nothing. In the third period, Dick Carpenter goes over, the Sooners missed the extra point, and Texas led 8-6. Trailing 8-6 in the fourth quarter, Sooners Jim Davis breaks into the Longhorn backfield, steals the ball from Bobby Lackey, and goes in for the TD. The two-point conversion works this time. Oklahoma goes ahead by the score of 14-8. The Texas passing game keeps Oklahoma defense scrambling. Bobby Lackey back. Hits Bryant for the TD, and it's 14 to 14. Bonnie Lackey kicked the field goal, I mean the extra point, to made it 15 to 14. The goal post came down on that one, and that started a Texas streak, so to speak. The Longhorns won at 59, 60, 61, and 62. They came up to the 1963 game. Late in the second quarter, Texas leading 7 0. Tommy Ford rolls into the end zone on a 12 yard burst. Longhorns lead 14 to nothing in the third quarter. All America Scott Appleton of Texas forces an Oklahoma fumble, recovers it himself. A 
few plays later, Duke Carlisle sends Phil Harris in motion. Hits him with a swing pass. The Longhorns go ahead by an amazing 21 to nothing count. Oklahoma finally gets some points on the board as Johnny Hammond rolls in for the first score, making it 21 to 7. But Texas, not to be denied, late in the fourth quarter, Marv Christnick on the rollout. It's George Sauer for the TD, making it 28 to 7. Texas went on to win all their remaining games. They wound up as the national champions of 1963. And they continue to dominate the Sooners in 64 and in 65. They lost in 66, won in 67, and then last year, what a battle that one was. Oklahoma's Steve Owen starts the Sooners moving with 16 yards. Then Bobby Warmack went to work. Hits his favorite target, Eddie Hinton. On the 12th play of the drive, Warmack taking a handoff, takes it himself, and Oklahoma goes ahead 20 to 19. But time is a factor. Two minutes, 37 seconds left in the ball game. Texas James Street hits on three consecutive passes to Darrell Comer. And a sideline pass to Bill Bradley for another completion. With only 39 seconds to go in the game, sophomore Steve Wooster caps an 85-yard drive, scoring the winning touchdown. Texas upsets its arch rival Oklahoma 26-20. And Texas has won ever since. As a matter of fact, the Texas streak is now 12 in a row, and they're going for number 13 today. Certainly nobody knows any more about this rivalry between these two teams than our colleague Bud Wilkinson. Bud, this is really something. I don't think there's any game quite like it. Uh, it's early in the year, but it's uh, at a time that both teams have been very well tested. If you win the game, you think you can go on and win your conference. You might be the national champions, and certainly you feel that uh, you're going to be strong, high in the national ratings. The uh, pressure that builds up downtown, uh, the fan interest, the alive stadium, all of these things combined to make it a classic. Well, a scene last night here in downtown Dallas was just a little bit like it always is. Everybody from both sides whooping it up, wanting their team to win. Of course, Texas being the number two team in the nation is favored. Oklahoma is ranked eighth in the country. From all over the Southwest, of course, they come for this game, getting tickets many, many months in advance, hoping to be able to say to their grandchildren, yes, we saw that game back in 1969. Both teams coming into today's game undefeated. And the familiar sign of Hook'em Horns, meaning Hook'em Longhorns for the Rooters from the University of Texas. So that is a bit of what has preceded this rivalry. In a moment, we'll take a look at this year's team. One sunny afternoon, Olive, Bean, and Walnut were strolling along when they ran into Hat, a Lincoln-esque type. Hi, Hat. You still in politics? No, no, not for years. I'm a Lincoln National Financial Planner. Ah. Said Walnut rudely. You're a life insurance man. That and more. I help people realize their dreams for the future. For example, Olive is a man of substance and should know all about annuities, retirement plans, and other investments. I can help him. And I can help young Bean protect his family while he's getting his business started. Uh, insurance is insurance, and who needs it? Had invited Olive and Bean to call him for full facts and went on his way. The three continued their stroll. Suddenly, quick as a wink, a squirrel rushed out of a side street, seized Walnut, and ran off. I do hope that Nut had some life insurance. Olive winced. He hated puns. If you don't talk to the man from Lincoln National about planning your financial future, you may be a bit squirrely. Never in the history of college football has there been such an offensive display as we're seeing this year. Bud, just take a look at these statistics. Well, you can see Ohio State is leading the country in scoring with 51 points a game, Tennessee second, Oklahoma 42.5 a game. In the NFL, the leading scoring team, Minnesota, with a little over 31 point average, Dallas with 27. Over in the AFL, it's Kansas City with 25 and the Jets with 25. Frank. Well, of course, there must be a reason for it, but uh, the reason we're having these pyrotechnics in college football today. Well, I think there's several reasons, Bill. First, uh, the college defense that has become used by most teams of the so-called monster and this new triple option that we're going to see both teams use this afternoon is a very potent weapon against that particular alignment, and college coaches are still in the throes of trying to readjust their defenses. In addition to that, uh, the ability to throw and catch the ball has improved tremendously. I think it's interesting to note that the 
fun part of football practice, maybe the only fun part of practice, is throwing, catching, and kicking the ball. And the boys who are doing the throwing, the catching, are working out right straight around the clock all year long, and they become remarkably adept. Uh, the one other thing, of course, that leads to it is more plays per game. The rule was changed a year ago that put the uh, clock killed each time you made a first down. And as you can see, the uh, average number of plays, uh, Ohio State running 93 plays a game, Houston 90, Arkansas, LSU, and again, comparing it with the pros, Minnesota 68 plays a game, Chicago 66.7, and Oakland 68, and the Jets 65. So the uh, colleges really are getting more plays off and more points on the board. Well, now we're hearing some new terminology this year. We heard about the triple option. You're going to be hearing things like the wishbone Y, the diamond T. So perhaps, Bud, we ought to uh, get into just exactly what these are and how we're going to look at them. Well, on the left of your screen, you see the Texas wishbone Y, and on the right, the Oklahoma diamond T. There's really just one difference in the formation, and that is that uh, Texas has their fullback, Worcester, about three and a half yards from the line of scrimmage, as you can see him forward of the two remaining backs, while Owens of Oklahoma is about six yards in the backfield. The reason for it, of course, is that Texas would prefer to have the quick, fast fake to Worcester, whereas Oklahoma would prefer to give the ball to Owens deep in the backfield. He'll get the ball about three to three and a half yards behind the line of scrimmage, and then we'll be able to find daylight along the line of scrimmage. This is Owens last year, and as you can see, this boy is some runner. Ground level shot, which gives you an idea of his power. Steve Owens last year set an all-time NCAA record for carries 356 times in one season. That was two times more than workhorse O.J. Simpson. He also, believe it or not, is quite a passer, as he shows here, throwing one for a touchdown to teammate Joe Killingsworth, who also will be in action here today. There is another young man who did not play a year ago, but who was very much in evidence in 1969, a young fellow by the name of Jack Mildren, quarterback for Oklahoma. Well, this is going to be the big day for Mildren. Uh, he's gotten off to a tremendous start. He's averaged 9.5 yards each time he has touched the ball in Oklahoma's first two games this year. Of course, this is the real baptism of fire for him in the Cotton Bowl against the University of Texas. How well he does today, of course, will lead to what kind of a career he's going to have, and I think it'll be a great one. And as it had a bit of excitement, he's also from Texas. We'll be back to take a look at the Texas offense in just a moment. Fill up with SO Extra and you've got something extra going for you. The power of the tiger come alive. Smooth, easy, responsive power. Extra power. The kind that makes so many high-performance car owners prefer SO Extra to any other brand. Feel the difference for yourself. Just let the E on your gas gauge remind you to fill up with SO Extra, and you'll feel the Tiger come alive. He's waiting for you at your SO station. Well, the University of Texas team this year is certainly in the mold of the great teams, the offensive teams of the Southwest. And uh, I think you can get an idea when you take a look at this awesome Texas offense of just how strong it is. Well, it's a new formation, and uh, the triple option is the big play, but the one that you just saw run is the counter off the triple option, and it was the largest gainer average per try that Texas had last year. Uh, the offense has got great balance. The triple option sets it up, but off the triple option, they run the draw play, as you see here, and they've got those great backs, Bill. This, by the way, is Steve Wooster, who wears number 30, and he went 39 yards in that play against Oklahoma last year. Now, number 88 is Chuck Spire. He's uh, split in. He's called Cotton Spire and a tough man to cover. He's got great speed, great hands, and uh, Darrell doesn't believe that there's any one man that is going to stop Spire. You can see him here making a great catch on the goal line. And looking forward to what's going to happen this afternoon, I think that the young man that you just saw, Cotton Spire, maybe will be the swing factor in the game. Oklahoma can't very well afford to double cover him. Uh, Texas has got too tough a running attack. If you're nine men against ten, their running attack will eat you up. So they've got the single cover Spire. If they can cover him with one man continually, effectively, then it's going to be some ball game because Oklahoma can move the football themselves. They simply need to get it from Texas. 
Okay, that would be then the keys to victory. And we'll be back with a final word about this battle between Oklahoma and Texas here in the Cotton Bowl in just a moment. Watch how the 78, the new double-belted tire designed by Firestone for the 1970 cars, stands up to extremes of hot and cold. We froze this Firestone 78 solid as a rock. Then, sledgehammered it. Sudden and violent temperature changes can be tough on tires. But cold as ice, we plunged it into boiling water. The Deluxe Champion 78 showed no damage anywhere. Because it's how you build a tire that makes it strong. And Firestone builds them with exclusive triple strength construction. That's the special way we bond the tread to the body, reinforce the sidewalls, and insulate the cords. The strong one, with triple strength construction. More mileage, more safety for your money. The 78, at Firestone Dealers and Stores. Pete tries to help a girl out of trouble and winds up framed for murder on The Mod Squad, Tuesday night at 7.30, 6.30 Central Time. Then Ken Berry and Ava Gabor star in Wake Me When the War is Over, a wild and wacky comedy on the movie of the week, here on ABC. College football celebrates its centennial year on ABC, the number one network for sports. On the 100th anniversary of college football, ABC Sports presents... Give me an A! Give me a B! Give me an A! Give me another A! Fight ball! Today's game features two unbeaten teams. The Sooners of Oklahoma against the Longhorns of Texas. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you live and in color by Goodyear, the only maker of polyglass tires. By NCR, creators of the famous NCR computers, cash registers, accounting, and adding machines. NCR, the national cash register company. By Chevrolet. Chevrolet is on the move with great new models for 1970, including the exciting cars in your Chevrolet dealer's sports department. And by Sunoco. People in the know, people on the go are moving to Sunoco. When you stop at Sunoco, you go with confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ever-growing and ever-changing skyline of Dallas, Texas. Again, the city, where a most intensive rivalry is renewed. The game between Texas and Oklahoma, a most colorful game set amid the animated atmosphere of the State Fair of Texas. It has its midway, it has its horse and cattle shows and exhibits of all kinds. And for the 24th straight year, the Cotton Bowl is sold out for the Longhorn Sooner game. Texas having won the last two. Oklahoma ranked number two in the country, or number eight in the country. Texas number two. I'm Chris Shankle, and we welcome you to this showdown, head-to-head -head battle here in Texas today. It has become famous. One man who has probably made it as famous as it is. 17 years the head coach at Oklahoma, 
And today the pressure is on him, not me. My alma mater is not here. But he coached Oklahoma for 17 years, and his star pupil now is the coach of Texas. So here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer Bud Wilkinson. Bud? Chris, it ought to be a whale of a football game. Both teams uh, try to set up their offense with a very powerful running attack. Both are using the same pattern from a little bit different set. Texas has their fullback up close, about three and a half yards. Uh, Oklahoma plays Owens, their tailback fullback, about six yards in the backfield. They both have similar defenses. They use the 4-4-3. The major difference being that Texas mixes the zone with man-for-man -man coverage, and most of the time, Oklahoma will play man-for-man. A key player to look for on the University of Oklahoma is Steve Zabel, who will be playing tight end. His blocking very well might, could make the difference in this ball game. If he's able to handle the linebacker cleanly, Oklahoma will be able to maintain ball possession. Are you nervous, Coach? I'm always nervous. Just being around the cotton ball makes me feel that way. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Texas is off a walloping victory over Navy. Oklahoma has had a week off. Let's meet the stars of our telecast this afternoon as we go down in the field. And here's our colleague, Bill Fleming. Bill? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to bring you the lineups for today's game. First of all, the visitors from the University of Oklahoma. At tight end, number 82 from Thornton, Colorado, Steve Zabel. At tackle from Rush Springs, Oklahoma, number 74, Jack Porter. At guard from Fort Worth, Texas, number 61, Steve Tarleton. At center from Enid, Oklahoma, number 50, Ken Mendenhall. At guard from Galveston, Texas, number 60, Bill Elfstrom. At tackle from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 73, Darrell Emmert. At split end from Oklahoma City, number 83, Joe Killingsworth. At quarterback from Abilene, Texas, number 11, Jack Meldrum. At wingback, number 35 from Clinton, Oklahoma, Roy Bell. At fullback from Jenks, Oklahoma, number 40, Mike Harper. And the tailback from Miami, Oklahoma, number 36, Steve Owens. And the head coach of the Sooners, Chuck Fairbanks. Good luck, Chuck. Thank you, Bill. And now for the Longhorns from the University of Texas. The tight end from Abilene, Texas, and E2, Tommy Woodard. Left tackle from Houston, number 50, Bobby Wunsch. Left guard, Wheat Ridge, Colorado, 64, Bobby Mitchell. At center from Edna, Texas, 52, Forrest Wiegand. Right guard from Sherman, Texas, 66, Mike Dean. Right tackle from Crane, Texas, 62, Bob McKay. Split in from Port Arthur, 88, Charles Spire. And quarterback from Longview, number 16, James Street. Left half from Hudson, Wisconsin, 35, Jim Bertelson. Right half from Belleville, Texas, number 24, Ted Coy. And fullback from Bridge City, Texas, number 30, Steve Wooster. And the head coach of the Longhorns, Darrell Royal. Good luck. Thank you. Those are the lineups. Now back to you, Chris. Three game activities have been concluded, and we'll be back for the opening kickoff here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> You know, a girl's life could sure be a lot simpler if Chevrolet didn't make such fabulous sports cars. I love this new Chevelle SS 396. Nikki says it's Chevy's tough one. All I know is, when we move out, the other cars move over. Or take Chevy's Corvette. It won't hold more than Ross and myself. But then is that really bad? I mean, who else do the two of us really need? And besides, the Corvette's not the kind of sports car you usually see around. Unless you're awfully quick. And this is the new Monte Carlo SS. Makes me feel so elegant when I ride in it. Yes, a girl's life can really get complicated. When you love to run around in every sports car Chevrolet makes. And you can lose a lot of sleep, too. Two unbeaten teams about to go. First in the center of the field on the 100-year symbol. Tri-captains for Texas. Street, Coy, and Hulsell for Oklahoma, Owens, Mendelhall, Zabel, and Files. The referee, McDuff Simpson. This will be the toss, deciding who will kick, who will receive. Now the other officials are being introduced. Jay Keck, Wayne Shaw, Mel Sheehan, and Barney Welch. Here's the toss. Who's going to call it? Who's going to call it? What'd you call? It's you call it it's hands. You want to spin that in? That's Oklahoma on the far side. 
Oklahoma has won the toss. Oklahoma will kick from right to left. They have a strong win, Bud Wilkinson, coming from right to left here at the Cotton Bowl in Texas. Both of these teams would rather have the football because they have such confidence in their offense, but the wind is strong enough that winning the toss, Oklahoma decided to go with the wind because it will make maybe a 15 to 20 yard difference in kicking. That's right. Kicking uh, today will be a big factor. Great punting on the part of Oklahoma, Texas average. There you see the recent series results. Coach Darrell Royal off two straight wins, 67 and 68. And of course, Oklahoma would like to bounce back, ranked number eight in the country. Texas is number two. Oklahoma has won two games, downing Wisconsin and Pittsburgh with a week off last week, while Texas defeated California, Texas Tech, and Navy. Oklahoma averaging 42 points a game. Texas a little more than 40. So we expect a lot of scoring, a lot of action here this afternoon where it's very hot down on the field. It's 94 degrees, ladies and gentlemen. Humidity is 51 percent. Charlie Spire and Jim Bertelson. Here you see them. 35 is Bertelson, that sophomore from Hudson, Wisconsin, a good fleet back. And so is number 88 as Bruce Durr uh, will do the kicking. Monty Johnson is in the vicinity of the ball also. The ball centered uh, in the middle of the field. This is the opening kickoff. And here we go. As soon as it's touched, that clock will start and the game will be underway. This is Bertelson. Now at the two-yard line, moving out to the 5, the 10, the 15. Coming across to the 20-yard line. And the white jerseys of the Sooners, trimmed in red. Led by the quarterback, Mildred, making the tackle. So now... It'll be the Longhorns, undefeated in three games, with the ball, first and ten, just inside their own 20-yard uh, line. They're going into a 15-mile-an-hour win. The quarterback will be 16, Jim Street, Coy, 24, Worcester, 30, Bertelson, 35. From the 20, Texas with the ball. You get an idea of the type of hitting that we'll have here today. Bodies everywhere as Ted Coy picks up a couple of yards for the Longhorns. And as we mentioned in the pregame show, Chris, uh, Oklahoma's going to test them to see whether they want to throw the football. That time, Monty Johnson, the Sooner safety man, was up to the split end side about four yards from the line of scrimmage as the ball was snapped. There's the offensive line of Texas now with a second and seven. The Longhorns at their own 23-yard line. Jimmy Street, the quarterback. Oh, a good loss thrown in there by number 43, Steve Aycock. A sophomore from Midland, Texas. Oklahoma, instead of being in their 4-4 on both snaps, has been in a 6-2. They were in a normal 6-2 on first down the last time they were overshifted. Texas ran the option back away from the original fake, but they were going into the overshifted side. If you look at the offensive backfield, Street has only thrown 17 times thus far this year. Now it's third down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Worcester, the fullback, number 30. Three, four, Oklahoma Sooner defenders. Led by Kevin Grady, number 75, Aycock, number 43, and Monty Johnson, number 25. And with the ball back at the 23, it is a fourth down and seven, a punting situation. Texas averaging 35.8, punting. Scooter Manzingo kicking his 15th punt of the year. A good rush put on it is not a good kick at the Texas 49, moving to the 45 is Stensred, number 17, Bruce Stensred. And I mentioned that the kicking game, very important, and into a stiff win, a kick going only 26 yards with a seven-yard return, and now the Boomer Sooners have it at the Texas 41-and-a-half bud. And the strategy of receiving the kickoff, apparently taking the wind rather than receiving, certainly has paid off thus far as Oklahoma has great field position on their first possession. Jack Mildred, the sophomore quarterback, number 11. Mildren handing off to the boy that's being touted for the Heisman Trophy. Won last year by O.J. Simpson. Hard-working Steve Owens from Miami, Oklahoma. As he brings the ball to the 39, two-yard gain, second and eight, Oklahoma. The ball is at the Texas 39. 39. What desire by sophomore Roy Bell of Clinton, Oklahoma, number 35, just inside the 35, but in the Oklahoma backfield, they swing the two halfbacks 
Bell and Harper. Harper is usually to the tight end side to be running behind the blocking of Zabel and to block himself for Steve Owens at tailback. At the Texas 34, it's third down and three for Oklahoma. No score. First down. Tailback Steve Owens. Shows you why he's great. And once again, that blocking combination that I spoke of, Zabel and Harper, cleared the way for Owens, who also picked up a little on his own. First down in this game is going to be the big down. Both these teams like to run the ball. If you come in second and six, second and five, it's much, much better than second and ten. Zabel to the far side, number 82, killing to the near side. From the 28, first down. And the Sooners grind it out with Bell carrying this time. The Sooner offense that has averaged 341 yards rushing in their first two games. 12th in total offense in the country. Number four in rushing offense. So you know that they are tough. And now the ball is, let's call it the 25, a gain of three. Second down and seven for Oklahoma in the white jerseys. Killingsworth to the far side. Mildred. And the deep back again, Steve Owens, who has carried as much as 46 times a game as Darrell Emmert, the right tackle, blocked beautifully. Chuck Fairbanks of Oklahoma believes that uh, Texas has got so much speed and mobility that trying to go wide against them, even though it looks like you may get the corner turn, they recover so rapidly. Therefore, the best thing to do is to run right straight at them as they're doing now. Last time they had third and three. Now they have third and two at the 20. And who would you call on for that yardage? Steve Owens. And Oklahoma now moves from the 41 of Texas after a short punt to the 16-yard line. First down. Let's watch it again. You can see the blocking here. Owens with both of the halfbacks leading him into the line. Hurdling, keeping his feet beautifully, and moving forward for the first down. No passing as yet. There's a pitch out to Roy Bell. And Bell gets a hold. A 197-pounder from Clinton, Oklahoma, is inside the 10 of Texas. A Texas defense being tested early now. As the ball is at the 9, after a 7-yard gain, it is second down and 3. Very good change of pace that time by sophomore quarterback Mildred. Jab step to the bottom of your screen and then back with the option. 72,000 plus watching as Mildred fakes to Owens. There he goes, all alone. A beautiful call by sophomore Jack Mildren of Abilene, Texas. And a beautiful fake by Steve Owens. Yesterday, number 11 celebrated his 19th birthday. And Oklahoma has taken a 6 to nothing lead, driving 41 yards in eight plays with a nine-yard run by the quarterback, Mildred, his fourth touchdown of the year, the point after by Durr. It's up and good! We'll return to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, where the score is Oklahoma 7, Texas nothing. They're moving, 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 moving. You know, most premium buyers don't really need premium, but regular gasoline won't do. That's where Sunoco Custom Blending comes in. Look, in addition to a great regular and a sizzling premium, only Sunoco offers these thrifty middle premiums. Higher octane than regular, yet priced below premium. Here's where most premium buyers can save real money. You get the power you want at the price you want to pay. Sure glad I found custom blending. It's the best deal in town. People in the know, they're moving to Sunoco. When you stop at Sunoco, you go with confidence. There's the man that scored the Oklahoma touchdown, the quarterback, a sophomore from Abilene, Texas. Nine-yard run, putting Oklahoma at six to nothing. The point after by Durr Good. So, with 10 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Texas back again to receive. That's Bertelson on the far side, number 35 on the near side, 88, Spire. Kicking the ball is Bruce Durr. Oklahoma from right to left with the wind to their back. Texas receiving. Bertelson at the 5, the 10. Now up to the 15. 
avoids one tackler, gets a good block, comes outside. But number 21, King, a defensive halfback, was there to bring him down. Let's watch the touchdown again. You'll see the balance in the Oklahoma offense here as Owens fakes over the ball. Look at all the Texas men close on Owens. Mildred coming around, and that one step to the inside, Mildred has Bell trailing him, but he doesn't need him as there are excellent Sooner blocks by the split end. And it's all the way for Mildred. And great kick coverage as we come back live now. Mildred with the Oklahoma six points. Texas with the ball to 17. And the Sooner defense. Stop Ted Coy. Number 76. Watson. Qualls is number 81. The defensive pattern that Texas will adjust to better as the game goes along. They start out in the six-man line, then they jump it to make it an odd set. And with the safety man coming up, they're really paying a very tight nine-man front. All right, here's Texas now, second down and eight at their own 19-yard line. They trail seven to nothing. Jimmy Street, the quarterback. And Cotton Spire. It should be a first down as Monty Johnson, number 25 in white, forced Spire out of bounds. And they were throwing against the number two pass defensive team in the country. Let's watch it again. It's straight up man-for-man -man coverage. Spire backed up the defensive halfback, Joe Pierce, and is wide open on the sideline break. Oklahoma will try to single cover Spire. He's a very tough man to single cover, but they believe they cannot afford to put two men out and still top Texas running. And now Spire's at the bottom of your screen. First down for Texas on that option. Street, the quarterback, gets five or six more. Jimmy Street. A pepper pot. Stopped by Joe Pierce, number 41, and Kevin Grady, number 75. Here's the Texas season record. As we said, uh, they average uh, a little more than 40 points. A powerful offensive unit against California, Texas Tech, and Navy. Now it's a second down. And with the ball at the 36, it's second and five. And Worcester, the fullback. And it's obvious that the Sooner defense, bud, is fired up for the day. They expected the pass that time. Monty Johnson, the safety man, was up and then backed out to give a little extra cushion had they thrown the spire on second down. Texas with six rushes, 11 net yards, as we have a third down, third and a little less than five at the Texas 36. Oklahoma is in the lead, seven to nothing. Oh, wide open, spire. Cotton Spire, number 88, covered by a green uh, defensive halfback, Glenn King, a sophomore, and Spire just couldn't get to it. The safety man, uh, Johnson, was up again. Let's take a look at it. You can see Spire going down the field, a little outside break. He left King hanging out there, and with no safety man, he is wide open, but the ball is a little bit overthrown, and those are the kind of breaks, of course, that make you very happy when you're coaching the defensive team. The 63rd renewal of this series. Goes way back to 1900. And now Scooter Monzingo will kick to these two men, 21 King, and number 17 is Stensred. This kick is better than his last, which went 26 yards. Back at the Oklahoma 24. Stensred is stopped at the point. It was McKay, number 62, that was there, following a 39-yard punt, a three-yard return. And now Oklahoma gets the ball. And it has been spotted by the referee, McDuff Simpson, at the Oklahoma 27. First down. Last time they had the ball, they went 41 yards in eight plays with the quarterback, Mildren, scoring. Here's Mildren now. The bell. Well, a couple of blocks missed there as Bell was hit hard by a Tessus, Bill Tessus, number 77, on the play. It appeared that he was blocked out, but uh, he fought off that block with a pivot and was right there. Now it is second down and eight for Oklahoma. Mildred. To Bell. And Bell falls forward for a two-yard gain to the 31. Bill Zappalak getting in on uh, on Bell in a hurry. And as you see, we have a third down and six for Oklahoma. Thanks for staying in their 4-4 defense, but varying the charges. When you're in the 4-4, you have a variety of stunts with four linebackers to work with four linemen. There's Coach Chuck Fairbanks, a disciple of Duffy Doherty, graduate of Michigan State. 
beautiful catch by Steve Zabel, number 82 from Thornton, Colorado. Danny Lester put the tackle on him. There you can see how uh, fired up they are for this game, shaking hands, rightfully so. It's the big one of the year for both teams as OU now has five first downs, Texas one. And the ball, let's call it the 40-yard line after that nine-yard play, first down. Going to the far side, a newcomer, John Shelley, number 80, a sophomore end. Here's the pass. And Shelley brought the play in. He is number 80, who was out there, but Mildren hurried the throw. Tom Campbell, the defensive left halfback, one of the Campbell twins, whose uh, dad, incidentally, is first assistant coach to Darrell Royal at Texas. And you can see the value of the zone type defense that Texas plays. As the ball was thrown, the safety man, Steinmark, was able to be over in the pattern of the play had the ball been completed. Now we have seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the first quarter. Oklahoma leads seven to nothing. They have the ball second and ten at their own 40. Sable to the far side. Bell, despite the fact that he was hit early by Bill Zapalak, still picked up a couple of yards. Just a step late. Uh, the play was designed to break about a half a count sooner, and he was just one step late getting there. He had the daylight. And now Oklahoma has a big third down play for the third time. To the far side, it's Shelley, number 80. The Diamond T backfield, and here's Mildred. Mildred, receivers covered. A Lucy, Jack Mildred. Very little gain, so it'll be a fourth down for the Sooners as David Richardson made a big defensive play for the Texas Longhorns. So it appears now that Oklahoma will punt for the first time. It's the first time that Oklahoma's been stopped on their first down plays. They've made three, four, seven, and two, and they had an incomplete pass on this series, which put them in that second down and ten situation. The defensive men now, the kicking uh, coverage people, are watching number 88. There's the kicker, Monty Johnson's kick going to Spire, who fumbles the ball momentarily, fell on by Danny Lester, number 23, from Amarillo, Texas. A 44-yard punt as ABC and the NCAA combine to celebrate the centennial year of college football. Time out to score, Oklahoma 7, Texas nothing. Computers. They can be expensive, but NCR did something about it. Invented these tiny memory rods, along with a unique way to make them march and drop into each hole on the board. An economical way, because it cut the cost of making computer memories and helped put computer prices in range even for smaller businesses. This is the kind of ingenuity that has led to the installation of 5,000 NCR computers in over 400 lines of business and has created the NCR Century Series a new concept in computer price and performance that's more useful to more kinds of business because NCR makes business machines that talk to computers. The world-famous NCR accounting machines, cash registers, and adding machines. NCR, the National Cash Register Company, and so much more. The NCAA salutes two winning members, Texas of the Southwest Conference and Oklahoma the Big Eight. Texas will soon become only the seventh college to win 500 football games. Oklahoma holds the longest winning streak in college football, 47 straight, all under the direction of my colleague Bud Wilkinson. And now, Texas at their own 16, first down. Jimmy Street, the quarterback, on a keeper. And as you see, he moved uh, near the 20-yard line. The way Oklahoma is playing their defense, uh, they're forced Texas along the line of scrimmage. Uh, Texas is apt to break the long gainer or the clean touchdown against this pattern, but it will be very difficult for them to march the ball consistently with short, steady gains. That's a symbol meaning hook them horn. Texas with the ball, second and six with their own 20. On the triple option, Jim Bertelson of Hudson, Wisconsin, sophomore, sensation. Didn't look too great that time as we see a Notre Dame score in the third quarter, 38 to nothing over Army. Yale uh, beating Brown, 27 to 13. It doesn't really make too much difference uh, who the back is, Chris, if there's no room to run. All right, third down and four. Texas with the ball. Bertelson to the far side. 
Intercepted. Number 43, Steve Acock. And Oklahoma's defense, beautiful. There he is, number 43, Acock. Street was trying to hit Tommy Woodard on the play. And that's the fifth interception going into their third game for the Sooner defense. That was the first time that Texas has broken their wide formation. They had a double flanker through the top of the screen. The Sooners now have the ball at the 17 of Texas. Miami, Oklahoma, Steve Owen carried the ball and as you see, penetrated the Texas defense for seven yards, bringing up a second and three. Wow, a little bit of misdirection in the backfield. Uh, the jab step to the top of your screen and the counter back with Bell leading the blocking. Killingsworth has put into the far side. Roy Bell. Showing a lot of promise. Carrying the ball closer, and he bumps into Scott Henderson, number 61, of Dallas, Texas. That's a little of a surprise, 18-17. And Syracuse leading Maryland. As we get the measurement here to see if Oklahoma has picked up a first down. They needed three yards on the play. First and goal to go for Oklahoma. So there we have the sixth first down for the Sooners. There, there is Acock who intercepted the Jimmy Street pass. Looks pretty happy, doesn't it? Pretty good set of burns, too. All right. Good land defense by Texas. All right. First and goal at the six. And Steve Owens. What a block by Zabel that time. He turned out. Watch it again. See the blocking form ahead. Number 73 turning back to make a straight block. That's Darrell Emmett. A short kick set up the first Oklahoma touchdown. Now an interception has them close again. On a second and goal, this was Owens, number 36, trying to get in, but Scott Henderson was there. And that was one time that the Texas defense was right by going for Owens. So now it's third and goal, and as you see, the ball now is at the two, a loss of a yard. Look at Warren. Three minutes, 39 seconds remaining. In the first quarter, Oklahoma leads seven to nothing. They have the ball. And Owens gets his eighth touchdown of the year. There was no daylight, Chris, so he had to go over the top. Thanks to the blocks of Steve Carlton and Jack Porter on the left side of that Oklahoma line. And it's 13 to nothing. Underdog Oklahoma. And now Durr of the Sooners will try the point after with Mickey Ripley holding the ball. Good. So in about seven minutes, the Boomer Sooners have scored again. Time out here at the Cotton Bowl. Dallas, Texas, the score. Oklahoma 14, Texas nothing. The Goodyear Polyglass Tire. I have close to 15,000 miles on. Uh, they show little or no wear at all. Judging by the way the polyglass tire looks now, I would say that I'll get uh, 40, 45,000 miles on this tire. You save more money because you don't have to buy as many sets of tires. Well, I have 20,000 miles on my Goodyear polyglass tires now, and they look to me just the same as when I bought them. You don't have to buy tires as often. So over the long run, you are saving money. And I'm pleased. That means more new dresses, more anything, I, more anything else I want. They're economical. Polyglass tires now have a little over 10,000 miles. They still look new. I'm going to be getting at least 40,000 miles. I don't know what you have to do to this tire to wear it down. If it doesn't say Goodyear, it can't be polyglass. 3.31 remaining in the first quarter as second-ranked Texas will receive from Oklahoma. Texas trails 14 to nothing. Bertelson to the far side, 35-88 is fired. Bruce Burr's kick, fielded by Bertelson, 10, 15, 20, down the hole. 
And for the first time today, the Longhorns have field position. The other three times, they started at their own 20, the 17, and the 16, and at the 22, a pass was intercepted. As Glenn King makes the tackle at the 42, the Longhorns. Let's see it again here. You can see the beautiful blocking of the Texas lineman. The kick was deep. Durr gets a lot of height on it. It almost had daylight before King came over to make the stop. A 42-yard return of the kick is Jimmy Street. All signals. Nice fake. Going deep is Fire. Fire has to wait for it. He gets it at the Oklahoma 23. Joe Pierce covering. And you'll have to praise this boy, bud. What an effort. He's the boy that uh, very well can make the difference. Uh, he's got great speed. Let's watch it again here. Pierce covering him. A little outside break. And he made Pierce move to the outside and then blew it right down the middle and with the safety man up. Spire was wide open. He had to wait a little. Pierce came back to make the tackle. A 35-yard play. Eric has replaced Spire at the 23 of Oklahoma. Ted Coy. Tries for a yardage, but in on him fast. Number 84, Jim Files, the monster man. And again, Oklahoma has courage to keep those nine men up in there tight against the running. So it'll be a second down and ten. Oklahoma is in the lead, and this may surprise those of you that just joined us. 14 to nothing. 2.35 left in the first quarter. Texas with the ball at the Oklahoma 23, second down. And Bertelson again feels the strength of number 84, the monster man, Jim Files, 6'4", 226. At the 24, a loss of one. It's third down and 11 for the Longhorns. When you're running that option play and they make you delay, the street had to delay that time. The pursuit usually gets there. Texas and their burnt orange jerseys. Oklahoma white, red trim. Bertelson now to the far side. Third and 11. Street gets some pass blocking. Out there all alone. Touchdown, Spire. Texas has moved from its own 42 in four plays. Touchdown. He was wide open. Spire, again, let's watch it. Ronnie Johnson, the safety man, trying to move out with him. Little crossing pattern. There's a halfback. Bertelson came to the inside, and Spire beats the crisscross defense and makes a miraculous catch, getting the ball right over the top of his head. And the kick now by Happy Feller. And Happy Feller just put his 16th consecutive point-after attempt between the uprights. Watch it again. Street going deep, and Spire wide open. Little crossing pattern with Bertelson and Spire, and it confused the Oklahoma defenders. They didn't know whether to switch off, which they tried to do, or to stay with their men, man for man. Well, if you're watching in color, splashes of red for Oklahoma. Lots of orange for Texas here in a, the Cotton Bowl. Build the capacity. 72,000 watching as Texas in four plays went 58 yards after being down 14 to nothing. It is now 14-7. And the Longhorns will kick into the wind to Oklahoma. Everett Marshall, a sophomore, awaits the kick by Happy Feller. Bell and Marshall bobble it. Bell and Marshall back there, but they recover their miscue. They really hung the ball high in the air. They couldn't quite decide which one ought to make the call and it's so noisy in this stadium that you certainly can't hear anything you have to do it by hand signal and a pair of sophomores just learned a valuable lesson here in the cotton ball now from the 18 the sooners who lead 14 to, to 7 and a 43 left in the first quarter and roy bell number 35 carried on the play Managed to get across the 20 to the 23-yard line. A good five-yard effort. Glenn Halsell, linebacker, making the stop. Second and five, Oklahoma. Boy, he almost had it all the way. Senior Steve Owens from Miami, Oklahoma, gets a block from Joe Killingsworth. 
as a marker is down on the field. Offside against Texas, needless to say, declines. A little counteraction in the backfield by Oklahoma seems to be pulling the Texas linebacker to step in the wrong direction and opening up the inside play for Owen. Gale Sayers, big eight rushing record has just been broken by Steve Owens, the senior from Oklahoma, as he carries again on a first down from the 32, getting four more yards out to the 36. Scott Henderson and Leo Brooks, an All-America candidate, number 71 in the burnt orange jerseys. We look at the Oklahoma huddle, and with the ball at the 36, second and six. There you see the career rushing marks. Owens blocking, Bell carrying the ball. Roy Roy Bell. Notice that time Oklahoma's tight end split out about four yards. Uh, flexing, we call it. The Texas linebacker moved to the inside against that set, which set up the wide play, the ability to turn the corner. That flexed end is a very difficult adjustment for the 4-4 set. Oklahoma with the number four ranked rushing offense in the country, 684 yards in two games. 12th in total offense. There's Steve Owens again, number 36, and he is in Texas territory. A very good uh, shot that time of the assault offense of Oklahoma with Zabel blocking down, clearing to the outside as Harper kicked out to open up the hole. Let's call it the 49 of Texas now, where it's a second down and two for the Sooners, who lead 14 to 7. And it appears that time has run out in the very first quarter here in the Cotton Bowl on a warm, humid afternoon. At the end of the first quarter, the score, Oklahoma, 14, Texas, 7. Hey, you guys, take a minute and look at this. It's a Schick Super Stainless Blade. We magnified a small part of this blade 475 times after a guy shaved with it five days so you can get a good look at it. Hold it. You know what did this? Corrosion. Corrosion shoot the heck out of it. Like the looks of that? Okay, now watch. The same guy shaved five times with a Schick chromium blade. Examine it closely. I ask you, did Schick chromium corrode like that super stainless? You decide. Which blade would you want to shave your face with? Don't you think it's about time you break the stainless habit and face up to chromium. Schick Chronochrome. You gotta feel it to believe it. Back again at the Cotton Bowl, you're looking at the University of Texas band. Both the Oklahoma band and this one will be entertaining at halftime. A great show. We hope you're enjoying the game. We've already had three touchdowns in the first quarter as the second quarter gets underway. Oklahoma now goes from left to right. They have a Second down and two. And Steve Owen. Well, that is a remarkable run, Chris. He was stopped by the defense and ran right through three tacklers to pick up the first down. Twelve carries for Owens already. 57 yards. And one touchdown from two yards out. The boy who broke Oklahoma's Billy Vessels rushing record. Vessels under Bud Wilkinson, a Heisman winner, probably watching in Miami, Florida today. To Roy Bell. A dangerous play you're handing off right in the face of the defensive end, but with the swing men coming around behind, the end has got to play it a little bit soft. Good for four yards, second down and six. He just joined us, Oklahoma, after a short punt, went from the Texas 41 and eight plays to score. Texas forced the punt again. Got the ball once more. Then Acock intercepted. Oklahoma went 17 yards in five plays to take the lead. Texas came back 58 yards in four plays. Street to Spire, a 24-yard scoring play. So it's 14-7. And Owens gets, uh, let's see, one more yard to the 39, bringing up a third down and five. And Oklahoma's had this situation quite often. See the statistics of the first quarter, 7-3 to three in first downs. Oklahoma way ahead in rushing yardage. Texas way ahead in passing yardage. Children. Beautiful catch. By number 42, Rick Baldridge. 
Baldrige from Lawton, Oklahoma, a senior. And to the 35. In a game where both teams move the ball very well, possession is going to be a key factor. In the first quarter, Oklahoma kept the ball 8 minutes and 50 seconds. Texas having a 6-10. And now Oklahoma has a fourth down, less than a yard, at the 35 of Texas. Killingsworth left. And driving for the first down, Steve Owens. You know who's coming in with it, Chris? <laughs> You're right there to stop him, and he still makes it. A powerful runner. Steve Owen, 6'2", 213 pounds, as you see the first quarter statistics. And the one big statistic, of course, is the interception against Texas, which set Oklahoma up in business on the Texas 16-yard line and set up the touchdown, the second touchdown. The wishbone tee, or rather the diamond tee. And Roy Bell gets a couple of yards where he's met by David Arledge, A-R-L-E-D-G-E. Call the ball at the 31 for its second down and eight. Oklahoma 14, Texas 7, 12 26 remaining in the first half. Bell has carried 11 times for 41 yards. The Sooners at the Texas 31. Bell again. Scott Henderson 61 in there in a hurry. They had that one defense perfectly. Guessing the wide field was coming, they were overshifted that way after they had slanted to the wide field out of their 4-4 set. With the four-yard loss, brings up a third down and 12 for the Sooners. But uh, it this doesn't seem to bother them thus far, but I think this is the first uh, third and real long yardage that they've had. The other times it's been third and six or seven. Right. Steve Zabel double covered on the play by the Texas defense Lester and Steinmark there so it's a fourth down and 12 with the ball at the Texas 35 and with the wind in Oklahoma's face it's probably just a little bit too far back for the field goal I believe they will go with the punt it'll be either Johnson or Zabel Ronnie Johnson who was enrolled at Texas switched back to Oklahoma fine punter Puts it in the air, and look where it came down. <laughs> Joe Killingsworth tried to uh, down it. So, in this centennial year of college football, we have a timeout. And the score is Oklahoma 14, Texas 7. Leave the phone off the hook. Teach the cat how to cook. Be a man. Up a tree, lock the door, lose the key, get away, right away, like today, for once in a lifetime, get into this world. Pan Am makes it going great, Pan Am makes it going great. This is the Cotton Bowl. For the 24th straight year, a complete sellout. And we have 11-29 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma leads. They're the underdogs. 14-7. Texas, after an Oklahoma punt from their 20. First down, street going. Ooh, he wanted to run before he had it. Cotton Spire, who caught the Texas touchdown pass. And that little bit of uh, crossing action between Spire and the halfback, Bertelson or Coy, is really confusing the Oklahoma defense thus far. I think it's interesting to note, too, Chris, that on the last drive, Oklahoma picked up 48 yards, but having started back on their own 17, they had to give up the ball without a field goal. Field position is a key factor. So it's second down and 10 now from the 20 for the Longhorns as they trail 14-7. And Jim Bertelson has it. 
the sophomore from Hudson, Wisconsin. Joe Pierce making a touchdown saving tackle, and the Longhorn fans are up and at him. Texas thus far has maintained the ability to hit the long ball with Oklahoma crowding them to make it very difficult to run. That went from the Texas 20 to the 25 of Oklahoma, first and 10 as Texas tries to tie it up. Coy, the flanker to the far side, outside Spire. Three. Spire catching the pass as Coy went deep, and Glenn King, whom they've been working on today, covered. Watch the play again. Little bootleg and a perfect throw that time by Street and Bertelson turning on the speed, but Pierce has just a stride on him to knock him out of bounds. Now at the 19 yard line, it's a second down and four for Texas, the Oklahoma 19. And Steve Wooster, the fullback, carries for the first time. And at his shoe top, Vince La Rosa of Brooklyn, New York. Number 52 playing for the Oklahoma defense. He is the Rover man. With the ball at the 18 now, it brings up a third down and three for the Longhorns. As you look at other scores here at the Cotton Bowl, underdog Oklahoma leads 14 to 7. Texas with the ball now. Bertelson. Set now. Long count, they couldn't quite hold. Right. Worcester, the fullback, who lost part of that burnt orange jersey. We have an offside. And that's the first uh, mechanical error by Oklahoma. Texas has had one interception, Oklahoma one offside. So that's a Texas first down at the, let's call it the 13-yard line of Oklahoma. They started at their own 20. Spire, 88, to the near side. Oh! You can see that they're looking for the triple option because everybody got hit, even though the ball was given off to Wooster, the first man through. And the fullback moved the ball three yards to the 10, where it'll be second down and seven. On your screen, it says second and eight. The man that totaled that couldn't subtract. Three yard gain, second and seven. And again. And it's five more against Oklahoma. Oklahoma has uh, seven first-year men on their defensive unit. And a game with this much pressure, this much intensity, and this much noise, it's very difficult to keep your poise. All right, now they're even closer at the five, where it's second down and two. Trying for the first down was Worcester. The Oklahoma defenders, Files, 84, Monster Man, Acock, 43, who intercepted a Texas pass in the first quarter, setting up an Oklahoma touchdown. And the referee has put the ball just inside the five, the four, where it'll be third down, a little less than two. Street and Spire. Bertelson. Second man through, takes the handoff. Doesn't appear to be enough for the first down as John Watson filled, number 76, and Stensrud from Dallas, number 17. But uh, measurement is called for now. And the play that you just saw is the inside belly play, which is very powerful. Wooster faking in and the halfback getting the ball coming around. It's perfect balance with the finesse of the triple option. Well, you see the uh, referee, McDuff Simpson, indicating how much yardage is needed. And uh, Texas now really must do it here or uh, turn the ball over. Or, of course, they could go for a field goal. And, uh, to make sure they do the right thing, they have called for a timeout with fourth down coming up. As each Saturday on ABC, college football presented in its centennial year. We have a timeout to score Oklahoma 14, Texas 7. 
How does a young father protect his family with life insurance now? And later on, get back the money paid in premiums? The answer is with all states, money back life insurance. It covers you with five or $10,000 of insurance until you're 65, then refunds all the money you paid in premiums, less payment fees, if any. Talk to the good hands people about money back life insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. If you're about to buy your first new car, here's a fact. Since General Motors introduced its anti-theft steering column lock, fewer new General Motors cars have been stolen. That's not a claim. That's a fact. The kind of reason why more people who start with this mark stay with this mark, car after car. Smiling faces in the Cotton Bowl. Happy co-eds and young men attending Texas and Oklahoma. And now it is fourth down less than a yard inside the Oklahoma Five for the Longhorns. Jim Street conferred with his head coach, Darrell Royal, and they go for it. Splitting, fire to the near side. Wishbone T. And they have the first down. Jim Bertelson, the sophomore from Wisconsin. A very good use of the snap count that time. Texas had been going on a long count. They got Oklahoma to jump offside twice. That time they came to the line of scrimmage and snapped it on the first verbal. Oklahoma wasn't quite ready for the charge. Good block by the offensive center of Texas. Number 52, Forrest Wiegand. And as you see, the ball is at the one and a half. First and goal. Texas now trying to cap an 80-yard drive. Bertelson touchdown. Jim Bertelson has scored his fourth touchdown of the year. Number 35 as Bob McKay throws the block. And there are two happy folks. Even happier is this youngster from Hudson, Wisconsin. He really dove for that goal line. He, had he not gone low and under, he wouldn't have got it. Oklahoma was making a good pursuit pattern. And now, Happy Feller trying for 17 in a row to tie up the ball game. Up and good. Well, we have a tie ball game with eight minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the first half. Texas was down 14 to nothing. They came back and scored the last two touchdowns. This time, uh, a total of 11 plays going 80 yards. And the pregame patterns of both teams holding quite true. Oklahoma with their offense trying to maintain the ball with the hard driving running of Steve Owens and Bell. Texas also would like to run, but Oklahoma is so tight defensively, so many on close to the line of scrimmage that they have to hit the long pass in order to set it up. And both of their touchdowns have been set up by the fine throw and catch. Now we're looking at Marshall. Steve Owens is also deep for Oklahoma. The score is tied 14 all and with the wind to his back. Feller really put the foot into that one. And it'll be a touchback for Oklahoma. And the ball comes out to their own 20 yard line where it'll be first and 10. Both teams now have run 28 plays. Both teams have scored twice. Oklahoma now, 82 Zabel, split to the near side. And Steve Owens carrying on the play. Scott Henderson there helping to tackle. And I believe that that's the first time that Texas has stopped Oklahoma almost at the line of scrimmage on first down. Texas has been yielding around four yards on the first down plays except for one incomplete pass that Oklahoma had. They gained about a yard and a half. Let's call it second and eight now. Mildred getting the bell. Did you see that sophomore break the first tackle? Zapalak finally puts a sure shoot-up tackle on number 35, Roy Bell. And it's a first down for the Sooners as they come bouncing back. With the ball at the 43, a 21-yard play. It's first down. Oklahoma. Owen. The 
shifty bowl of a runner. See the boards. Let's watch the blocking on this play in slow motion. You can see the two setbacks. Bell swinging wide as Harper goes up to make the block. Owens has the ball, and look at that block by Harper. The safety man comes up, Zablak back. And Owens breaks to the bottom of your screen, and then downfield driving for every inch that he can get. 17-yard run by Steve Owens. First down at the Texas 40. Roy Bell, the ball carrier, number 35 in white. Limping just a bit to the far sideline. Zapalak on the tackle. And that's the first time that the end has come in to challenge the first handoff man. They've been handing the ball off right in front of him. That time Zapalak stepped in and hit the handoff man. If he continues to do it, uh, it does set up the option play. Jeffrey Nordgren, number 19, has replaced Bell. Second down and eight. Owens carrying. Atessis, number 77, in on the play. Very little gain, about a half yard. Owens now, 17 carries, 81 yards. 12 straight games that he has gained 100 yards or more for the Sooners. Third down, and let's call it seven. And now, the Texas defense covers the receivers. They get Milgren, Glenn Halsell, number 67, and the defensive left end of Texas are in in a hurry, and the loss is back to the 46. That's a loss of nine. Fourth down and 16. The score tied, 14 all. 5.41 remaining in the first half. Spire is deep. Monty Johnson will kick. Left-footed kicker rushed hard. Spire calls for a fair catch at his own 18-yard line. Cotton Spire, Mr. Uh, everything, it seems, number 88, Let's catches the, the ball after a 28-yard punt. Let's watch the kick again. High pass. Monty Johnson brings it down. He's a left-footed kicker. Watch how close this kick is to being blocked. Here comes Texas. It looks as though they're in position, but the lane was open, and he did drive the ball through the lane, kept it from being blocked. Bertelson, a flank of the near side, outside Spire, number 88. Worcester on the delay. Loss on the play. Steve Aycock and Steve Castile. And Oklahoma expecting the pass, had the rush on against the draw play. So it's second down and about 12. Score tied, 14 all. We're at the Cotton Bowl. But in uh, seven days, we've had two terrific football games, Alabama and Mississippi last Saturday night, and now Texas, Oklahoma. Jimmy Street of the Longhorn. Spire apparently was uh, the man that Street wanted to hit. The rush uh, broke down the timing of the play and also destroyed his vision. He simply was getting rid of the ball. Third and 12. You know, the NCAA notes with pride its members strong contributions to the nation's physical fitness. More than 155,000 students at NCAA schools participate in 24 different organized sports, including 37,000 in college football. Third down and 12 now. Ted Coy points to the far side. Fire going out. Fire has the ball. And is down at about the 34. Castile and Pierce covering for the Oklahoma defense. And let's watch it again in slow motion. Spire, outside break, deep break. And as Pierce dropped back, the second cut to the outside, and you can see that he is wide open. His street hits him perfectly. Watch this little move. It's a good thing that help was on the way. Number 84 coming over to make the tackle. Files the monster man. Spire now, five catches, 97 yards, and a touchdown. Street throwing again. The Spire. And the sophomore defender, Glenn King of Jacksboro, Texas. Pulls him down. What we call a little hitch pattern. Spire taking two steps down the field and then two steps back and being hit right on the line of scrimmage with the ball. Hopefully he'll get turned upfield and be able to make the move downfield before the defensive halfback gets there. Spire now with 
the torn jersey at the bottom of your screen on a second and two from their own 41. Billy Dale from Odessa, number 22, tried for the first down. Let's see where it is. Officials looking. He's calling for a timeout now, the referee, but Duff Simpson. Jim Files and John Watson tackled for Oklahoma. Here's the measurement for a Texas first down. Jimmy Street, number 16, the quarterback. First down, Longhorn. The official timeout gave Spire an opportunity to come over to the sidelines to get a jersey change, which they're working on. Hopefully, we'll get him back without having to take a called timeout. Now the bands are beginning to move from the stands. What a halftime show coming up. There is uh, Cotton Spire, who caught a touchdown pass today, getting a new jersey. Ken Eric is filling in for it, number 45. Number 43. Texas with that incredibly sound running game, passing more today than usual, as Worcester, the fullback, moves out to the 46, a gain of three, second and seven. Texas total gain rushing thus far, Chris, is only 29 yards, which gives you some idea of how tough they're being played on the ground by Oklahoma, but they gained 160 passing. Score tied, 14 all. Worcester tumbling up near midfield that the officials say is knee touched at the 48 a gain of two which brings up a third down and five the street now has thrown 11 times completing seven for 160 yards and Texas passed for only 119 yards in its first three games the moral of that is you go with what's working for you and why pass if you can run them and they found out earlier the running game wasn't going to be much against Oklahoma. Fire, the intended receiver, and that brings up a fourth and five for the Longhorns at their own 48 with the score tied. And it looked like a broken pattern. Spire thinking that he was supposed to get the sideline cut. Uh, Street thinking he was going to fake the sideline and roll and go deep. And talking with Daryl Royal now to be sure that that doesn't happen again. So it's a fourth down and five. Scooter Monzingo with the wind to his back, ready to kick. King goes deep, number 21, along with Stensrick. That's a good kick. And speaking of that win, normally we have the Goodyear blimp, the America here, to bring you those exciting overhead shots. But because of the strong winds, America, the Goodyear blimp is grounded. Time out here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, where the score is Oklahoma 14, Texas 14. gasoline buyers are burning money paying for octane they don't really need stop at sunoco and stop burning money sunoco's custom blending pump offers these thrifty middle premiums higher octane than regular yet priced below premium so you get the power you want at the price you want to pay try sunoco middle premiums and stop burning money People in the know. To Stop at Sunoco and start saving money. Our end zone shot of the Cotton Bowl. Famous. Many, many gains, but none more famous than the annual rivalry between Texas and Oklahoma, these two great southwestern states that are always wonderful to visit because the inhabitants have a great pioneer spirit. And so do their football team. Right now, after a punt, First and 10 from the 20 for Oklahoma with the score tied. Minute 59 to go. First half, Roy Bell getting about six yards. Uh, Oklahoma has four timeouts remaining unofficially, so even though the clock has only a minute and 46 seconds, they do have quite a bit of playing time remaining. Now it's second and four for the Sooners, who scored two touchdowns, leading Texas 14 to nothing. Texas came back. Steve Owen. Did he lose the ball? Whistle blown before the fumble. So it's going to be 
a third down and let's see where the forward progress is marked at about the 28 so it'll be third down and two as Leo Brooks makes the tackle something you rarely see Owens fumbling the ball they exchange the ball deep enough in the backfield that he has a chance to put it away usually before he hits Shelley is to the near side but Jack Mildren stays on the ground with Steve Owens number 36 Atessis on the tackle and that uh, appears to be a first down for the Sooners thus far Oklahoma with 13 first downs Texas 10 and you see the ball is at the 31. Jack Mildred. Dell again with a spinning effort following uh, the contact. Number 86 is Mike Campbell. He wears 86. His bro twin brother Tom wears number 84 on the Texas defensive unit. And it appears that Oklahoma is simply going to maintain possession of the ball, not taking timeouts to try to score. The yardage is very interesting. Let's look, get us to your after this snap. Mildred getting the bell on second and seven. Being forced out of bound by number 67, Halsell, and 23, Danny Lester. And Texas has made 160 yards passing, 31 rushing. Oklahoma, 171 rushing and 12 yards passing, which is a good indication of the different tactics used by both teams. Now we have a third down and three with 19 seconds remaining on the Cotton Bowl clock. The score is tied 14 to 14. Number two ranked Texas, number eight ranked Oklahoma. The Sooners have the ball at their own 38. And Steve Owens just helping to run out that clock, waiting for the first half to end. Leo Brooks moving in, joined by Greg Fletz, number 31. There you see the clock. Fourth down will never happen. There's a great halftime of entertainment coming up, and don't miss it. The score here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, is Oklahoma 14, Texas 14. What's so nice about it is she just couldn't understand the fact that it was like a child is a piece of paper on which every passerby is on my hat. And it's when I said to her, it's like Jane's just been scribbled on too much. It's not anything she does. It's just the way she approaches it. I mean, I'm not a child. Chevrolet, on the move for 1970. Hazel! Help! Titan 90, the biggest Chevy mover. Chevy Suburban. Inside, 181 cubic feet of people or cargo space. Blazer. With four-wheel drive, it can get you there when the roadmap says it can. Blazer v 8s available up to 350 cubic inches. Room for five. Chevy van for 70 is the one that's easy to get into, thanks to big doors and a low price. Then there's Longhorn, the first pickup specifically designed to carry the big camper bodies and do it smoothly. Discover Chevy's bump exterminator suspension. Harold, I love you! Move! Move, cow! Giddy up! This year, do something different. Test wheel a 70 Chevrolet truck. Your next second car could turn out to be your first Chevy mover. 67,000. Well, it's halftime here in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Quite a football game. Texas and Oklahoma all tied up 14 to 14. I'm Bill Fleming, and I'll be giving you the halftime information, the color, and the music. Right now, we'd like to show you the University of Oklahoma campus. The University of Oklahoma community represents a cultural cross-section that draws its student body from every state of the Union and from a broad range of foreign countries. Its housing and recreation facilities are excellent. 
and plans call for further expansion of this area with the construction of an all-purpose arena, a physical education recreation center, and a student activity center within the next few years. Under the leadership of a new president, Dr. J. Herbert Holloman, the university has embarked on a massive redevelopment program resulting from a self-study conducted by more than 500 faculty and staff members, students, alumni, and state and national leaders. So from a look at the Sooners campus in Norman, we're back live now in the Cotton Bowl watching the Pride of Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma Marching Band, under the direction of Dr. Gene Broad. The show today, Designs in Marching. Oklahoma Texas game is brought to you live and in color by Allstate Insurance Company. For insurance to protect your car, your home, your life, health, and business too, talk to the good hands people. By Chevrolet. Chevrolet is on the move with great new models for 1970, including the exciting cars in your Chevrolet dealer's sports department. By Pan Am, the world's most experienced airline, the airline that makes the going great. And by Goodyear, the only maker of polyglass tires. We're just about set to go with the second half of the game. Now let's go back to our ABC telecast booth, Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkinson. Thank you very much, Bill Fleming. We certainly enjoyed the halftime, giving us an opportunity to catch our breath after a most fascinating and fast first half, Bud Wilkinson. And the statistics are very interesting. Oklahoma leading in first downs, uh, way ahead in rushing, 173 yards to 31. Texas averaged just 1.6 yards per rush, which is, of course, way below their par. But if you look at the passing statistics, you begin to understand that 12 yards passing for Oklahoma against 160 for Texas. Texas averaged 22.9 yards per completion. Oklahoma won the possession war. They kept the ball 16 minutes and 55 seconds out of the first 30. Well, Bud, it appears um, now that let's see if Happy Feller has uh, put a tee uh, down on the 40-yard line with uh, Texas having uh, the opportunity. They elect to kick and take the wind. This is one of those things that you really puzzle over when you're coaching. The wind usually dies down in the southwest the later in the afternoon it gets, and you would like to take the wind and then hope it dies down, but if it's not going to die down, you'd rather have it in the fourth quarter, so it's just one of those things that you just don't know about. And now they have Steve Owens, Roy Bell, and Everett Marshall deep, Oklahoma. That's Owens to the near side. Happy Feller's kick is deep with the wind to his back. Marshall in the end zone. It's a touchback. So the Sooners have the ball first and 10 at their own 20 with a score tied 14 to 14. Next week on our exclusive NCAA telecast, we'll be uh, bringing you the University of California UCLA game. Oklahoma got good field position twice, and that led to both of their scores. They got it the first time on the Texas 41 and then intercepted the pass to get it on the Texas 16. They're starting now from their own 20. The deep back is number 36, Steve Owens. And the ball goes to Roy Bell, who now has carried the ball 18 times, picked up 73 yards in the first half. Owens picked up 85 yards, also makes the tackle at the 26 where it'll be second down and four and those are the men up front for Oklahoma second and four Steve Owens they have everybody leading him uh, both Harper and Bell going through the hole with double team blocking on the inside and he simply tries to power to pick up that consistent short yardage the backfield 11 Mildred 35 Bell 40 Harper 36 Steve Owens and with the ball out to the 30 it is a third down and a little less than one yard and Mildred slides off for the first down that takes great athletic ability, Chris. He tried to hit it to the right. It was absolutely jammed up. He had the poise to step back and swing over until he found some daylight. Some great individual ball players out here, like the offensive center of Oklahoma, senior Ken Mendenhall, number 50 from Enid. So now with the ball at the, let's call it the 32 Oklahoma first down. 
Bell again. Roy Bell. And 61 in on the play for Texas. Scott Henderson along with Greg Pletz. And Texas has altered their defense. They're moving their linebackers up on the line so that they have six men on the line of scrimmage rather than only four. That's Mendenhall, the center, out of the huddle first, over the ball. Jack Milgren, sophomore quarterback from Abilene, Texas, with a second and seven in his own 35. And pass way off, intended for Joe Killingsworth. And a fine catch by Coach Fairbanks. Chuck Fairbanks, who played end for Duffy Doherty at Michigan State, and in his fourth year at Oklahoma, third as head coach, took over with the untimely death of Jim McKenzie. So now it's a third down and seven. Killingsworth split to the far side. Zabel split to the near side. And it goes to Owens. Fourth down. Owens defense on the play. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Mildred dropping right straight back. Owens is the tailback. He swings to the top of the screen. Mildred sets. Looks downfield. No one is open. Owens is open in the flat as sort of a safety valve, but uh, there's very little chance for him to move as we get a very difficult, very tough, strong tackle by McKinney, the Texas linebacker. Steinmark is deep. Left footed Monty Johnson's kick. Taken by Danny Lester, number 23. Inside his own 40. A 29 yard punt into the wind and now the field lights have been turned off here on a graying cloudy afternoon in Dallas Texas so Texas gets the ball for the first time after kicking off to Oklahoma here in the second half and then the first half Oklahoma crowded Texas in the line of scrimmage and let Cotton Spire be quite open with only one man covering him from the 36 first down Jimmy Street nice run on the play by number 35, Jim Bertelson. Out to the 41, a gain of five. Second down and five for Texas. And Kevin Grady on the tackle. Last play was the counter off of the triple option, which was the largest average per try for Texas last year. Spire to the far side, second and five. Look at that pile up. John Watson is there, Castile joining Ernie Coy of Texas. And very few people left back in the secondary. Looked like a reenactment of the very first game. Princeton Rutgers a hundred years ago, bud. Oklahoma is trying to disguise their single coverage now with the three deep men playing the normal pattern and then moving right before they expect the ball to be snapped. Fire split to the near side on third down and three from the 43-yard line of Texas. And the fullback breaks loose. Worcester. From Bridge City, Texas. And the Longhorns are in Oklahoma territory. Oklahoma had jumped into a 7 1, uh, expecting the running play, but they don't believe expected Booster to have the ball. Usually on short yardage, Texas will fake to Booster and go out to the wider option. Now at the Oklahoma 47, Texas first down. Scores tied 14 all. 11 minutes, 6 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Bertelson. Finds a little hole as markers go down on the field. Let's watch the signal. Our penalties have been all as a result of mechanical uh, miscues. And here's another offside against Oklahoma. So it's first down and five now for the Longhorns. That's only the third penalty of the game. Oklahoma's defense has been offside three times. At the 42 of Oklahoma, Texas first and five. That was Worcester again. The junior fullback running into Steve Castile along with Albert Qualls, number 81. And as you see, the ball is at approximately the 36, sufficient for the first down. Texas sustaining its drive following an Oklahoma punt on the first series of downs. 14-all the score. 
the wishbone tee of Texas. Fire. A little hitch pattern to Spire again, but it was low and he was on the ground when he caught it. Uh, he would have had time that time had the ball been high enough to turn and face the defender and try to juke him out of position. There was a good rush on the pastor, passer, Bruce Deloney, a sophomore of Oklahoma City, but a good rush on street. And as you see, the ball is at the uh, 37 yard line. Here's a correct score, Wisconsin 27. 13 for Iowa. And Street. Looking here. Face mask, perhaps. Personal foul. He didn't follow it up. But I'm sure it was a face mask, but one of those things that was so fast and right on the ball, and you could see the Oklahoma players objecting because they felt it was inadvertent and he probably didn't hold it very long. But if your hand is up there, the penalty has to be called. So it's a break for Texas at the 17 of Oklahoma first down. Good effort by Jim Bertelson, whose parents drove from Hudson, Wisconsin last week, 1,100 miles, to see him star in the Navy game and are here again today to watch uh, the first year varsity man go against rival Oklahoma. Oklahoma continuing to move their two linebackers into the line to get into a 6-2 defense. And Spire. they overshifted some. Excuse me, bud. Spire set away now. Street optioning it to Bertelson. Bertelson to the 11. Kevin Grady in on the play along with Jim Files. With the ball at the 11, it brings up a third down and four at the 11 of Oklahoma. Nine and a half remaining in the third quarter. Oklahoma scored the first two touchdowns. Texas came back with two to tie it up. You could hear that up here, Chris. Ginger, though. Worcester, the fullback, felt it more than anyone else. Number 30. Uh, Pierce, uh, the Oklahoma defensive halfback, has changed his play against Cotton Spire. He's sitting on his inside shoulder about two yards off the line of scrimmage. So if this game progresses, it'll be interesting to see if Spire can beat him. Happy Feller, number five, has kicked one of two field goals this year. And let's see if he can do it again. From the 17 plus the 10 of the end zone, a 27-yard kick on an angle, severe angle. Up and it's good. Time out here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. The score, Texas 17, Oklahoma 14. The business letter. Do you have any idea how much it costs you to dictate, transcribe, type, and mail the average business letter? $2.74. $2.74, according to a statement in Sales Management Magazine. How much of this $2.74 could you save by calling long distance instead? And how many days would you save in getting a reply? And how much more complete would that reply be? Think about it. Think about that $2.74 you spend for the average business letter. Then think about the speed and low cost of long distance. Next time, call long distance and get our system, the Bell system, on your side. Texas has earned the lead on a 27-yard field goal by Happy Fellers. We look at 24 Marshall at the bottom of your screen. That's Steve Owens. And out of sight is Roy Bell, number 35, as Texas kicks. 8.39 left in the third quarter. And again with the wind to their back. Long, so it'll be a touchback coming out to the 20-yard line where Oklahoma will try to move against the Texas defense. Bud Wilkinson? Oklahoma has been running the ball very consistently on first down, and the Texas defense is beginning to pick up the patterns a little better. They're still moving the ball, but uh, not with the consistency that they showed in the first quarter. I believe that Oklahoma will begin to throw the ball on early downs. There was an offside against Oklahoma decline. 
So now Oklahoma moves from left to right into the wind, which has been gusting as much as 28 miles an hour. We have Shelley, number 80, to the far side. Mildren is the quarterback. And 77 of uh, Texas to Texas allowed Owens, or moved in, and Owens bounced off of him for just a short gain of less than a yard, but we'll call it to the 21, where it'll be second down and nine. Here's 80, Schelling coming to the near side. Zabel, 82 at the top of the line. Otherwise, we have Milton throwing. And Shelley, the receiver. Glenn Halsell on the tackle. There's Shelley, number 80. Let's watch it again. He's the split end. Slow motion, starting down the field. Little inside break. The hook pass up. And the fine catch is Tom Campbell comes in. And he almost spun away from Campbell, but help was on the way. Mildren is four of seven passing. First down at the 35. A loose ball. Good recovery by Roy Bell. Number 35. And that's the second bad play for Oklahoma. They, Mildren was rushed in the, before the first half ended, but that's the first big loss that they've had. Well, she had an accident. We hope not playing football. So the loss is back to the 21. A loss of 14, second down and 24. And Bell moves out about five or six yards for Oklahoma. Glenn Halsell, 67, is there. Along with Greg Platts and a Texas defensive player shaken up as we have 708 remaining in the third quarter on a very warm afternoon and we have a timeout at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas with a score as Texas 17 Oklahoma 14 there is no man in the moon now we know beyond a shadow of a doubt because America has put man on the moon we're conquering space just as we were conquering space 100 years ago when America's railroads put man on St. Louis, on Portland, and on Wichita. Not as far away as the moon, but just as remote when there was no way to get there. America's railroads, without them, man might not be on Atlanta, or on Tucson, or on Houston, or Cape Kennedy. And without Houston and Cape Kennedy, man would not be on the Sea of Tranquility and we'd still be in the dark about the moon. As a matter of fact, without the railroads, the space program might not yet be off the ground. America's railroads, who needs them? You do. On the last Oklahoma play, number 60, Bill Elstrom, injured, native of Galveston, Texas, a senior, and Mike Mullen will fill in for him and, of course, you see he's getting immediate medical attention here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas as Texas on a 27-yard field goal about a minute and a half ago took the lead for the first time today, 17-14. to 14. Now Oklahoma with the ball at its own 26. They have a third down and 19. Mildred, the ball took off on him. And Fred Steinmark of Denver, Colorado. One of three non-Texas on the 22 starting team. There he is. A pass intended for Shelley, and now each team has been intercepted once. And Texas gets the ball at the Oklahoma 49. This will be a key test of the Oklahoma defense. If they can dig in and stop them now, they'll be very much back in the ball game. Jimmy Street, number 16, quarterback from Longview. Worcester. One of the things that you overlook about this Texas team is the tremendous blocking of their two halfbacks, Ted Coy and Jim Bertelson. That was a fake that time, but Coy was blocking on Al Quails, the Oklahoma end, and he knocked him right flat on his back. Just received word that Elstrom has a sprained right ankle. Smarts. Second and seven. 
Great catch. Round of 37 of Oklahoma by Cotton Spire, number 88. And thus far, the single coverage of Oklahoma has not been able to contain Spire. First down for the Longhorns. Third quarter, California leads Washington. Washington State leads UCLA 23 to 7 in the third quarter. Spire now with seven catches for Texas. 110 yards. And Ted Coy, tri-captain of the Longhorns, gets to about the 34. Qualls and Castile on the stop. Uh, two Texans that play for Oklahoma. Qualls from Houston, Castile from Garland. So from the 34 now, it is second down and seven. And there is Qualls from Houston. Very unusual style of defensive play. Uh, most ends do come in and force, but as you could see from the time that play started at him, Qualls just gave ground to the outside. Uh, Texas not being able to make any sort of play on the defensive end. Lost the pattern of the timing of the blocks and opened up for the loss. Third down and 14 from the Oklahoma 41 for Texas. Bertelson is out and Billy Dale is in. And an interception, Vince La Rosa of Brooklyn, New York, handing back to Joe Pierce. And Pierce is at the Texas 24. They tried the little switch pattern again that had been so effective when it was single coverage, but La Rosa had dropped out to make a double coverage in the flat, and he was there for the interception. La Rosa intercepting, handing backwards to Pierce. And now Oklahoma has the ball at the 24-yard line of Texas. What a game. Second interception of a Jim Street forward pass. Shelley goes to the far side. Zabel is in tight. Mildred gets to Steve Owen. Isn't he a runner? What a spark a play happens to be every now and then. There's a Brooklyn boy who plays for Oklahoma that made the interception and then Pierce, number 41. Wow. And there's a long way to go. So now there is a placement and a measurement here. Steve Owens, number 36, looks and sees that it's a first down for the Sooners. The word Sooners comes from the white settlers who slipped past the soldier guards at night into the new Oklahoma country and took choice sites for the farms before the date set for the various Oklahoma land runs of 1889. So the Sooners now at the 14 first down Texas leading 17 to 14. And a shoot top tackle on Steve Owens by number 42 McKinney and Tex Mac McKinney. Oklahoma has changed the offensive pattern just a little bit in the first half they were handing off quickly to the front halfback. Steve Owens on the last play had moved up, so he was only four yards back, and they had the lead halfback blocking with the same straight-ahead pattern. And now for the 13th straight game, he has gained over 100 yards. 24 carries, 103. That time, not so successful. Mike Campbell, and on the stop. Very big third and four coming Ooh. up, Chris. Isn't it, though, at the eight-yard line of Texas? Third down. Shelley is the split end to the far side. Owens did not make it. Mike Campbell is number 86 in the uh, orange jersey. We tripped him up. Also 67. And as you see, it is a fourth down and two. And we're going field goal. Field goal time. Into the wind uh, on a acute angle because it'll be in so close. Coming from about the uh, 12 and a half plus the 10 yards of the end zone. 22 and a half. Bruce Durr, who is 0 for 1 this year, will try the attempt. And this will tie it up if he makes it. Up and good.
out the ball. What baby saves for college football at its best. Now in its centennial year, with time out to score, Texas 17, Oklahoma 17. Stop. Hold it. Don't let this happen to you. Now for a limited time, Goodyear offers the Sure Grip Winter Tire plus safety spikes for extra grip on ice, both for this special low price. That's right. This great Goodyear Sure Grip Tire with metal safety spikes, both at this special Goodyear price. But hurry, the offer ends Saturday, October 18th. If you're a renter, don't underestimate the value of all your belongings. Suppose you left the price tags on everything you own, furniture, clothing, appliances, a big investment, right? To protect it, Allstate has insurance specially designed for renters. It's low-cost protection against loss from fire, theft, it even has liability coverage. Allstate renters insurance. Talk to the good hands people. You're in good hands with Allstate. 25 is Monty Johnson, 20 is Durr, who just kicked a 22-yarder to tie up the game. And Bud, they uh, sometimes use a, a little strategy on this uh, type of a kick. Johnson sometimes moves in and kicks it if the field is open to either side. But this time, Texas had it covered. Bertelson at the 15, 20, has blockers, stumbles forward, and then is pinned down by O'Shaughnessy, number 18. There is... Jim Bertelson, sophomore from Hudson, Wisconsin, quite a quarter horse fan, works on uh, the Bobby French Anacatcha Ranch out in Brackettville, Texas, when he's not in uh, school. And every possession is the key when both teams move the ball as these do. Eight of 16, one touchdown for Jim Street. From the 32, from behind hit, the pass to Spire. Oh, Bruce Stensred, a senior from Dallas, a touchdown saving jersey body tackle. And it was great faking in the backfield, uh, the fake of the counter play. While that backfield fake is going on, Spire took that outside break and then turned on the speed. The safety man was up again, so there was no help as he came down the middle of the field. Perfect throw by Street. It appeared that Spire might have it all the way. Stensred, however, came over and did make the tackle. And Spire limps off the field now. Texas has a first and 10 at the 19 of Oklahoma. Ted Foy battling inside the 10-yard line. Bobby Mitchell and Forrest Wiegand blocking forward for the Longhorns, who now are to the 9-yard line. Not quite enough for the first down. It'll be second and less than one and the Texas line is beginning to dominate the line of scrimmage against the Oklahoma defense. Eric has replaced fire split in and there goes Coy. Ted Coy Texas touchdown 68 yards three plays and the Longhorns and we have a penalty against Texas. That will change the crowd noise slightly. Illegal procedure position on the call. Let's take a look at the play again. It's the inside belly play going to the left of your screen. There's the first fake to Wooster. Beautiful fake. And there goes Coy. Great block by Bertelson. Wooster down there to help block as Coy takes it into the end zone. But the penalty brings the ball back. And now we have a second down and five so the ball will uh, be snapped at about the 14 as texas has called the time gives us an opportunity to remind you that you have a chance to see five more college football games being played this afternoon that's right film excerpts from each are featured on the weekly ncaa highlight show on abc television so check your local listing for the exact time tomorrow at the Texas receiving the kickoff. You can see the double fake there. And the long ball from Street to Spire. And he was open down the middle and almost had it all the way. Spire, with the single coverage, has been wide open most of the time. He did hurt his ankle on the play that you just saw. And he's getting needed attention there on the bench. 
Well, the team on the short end of our exciting game last Saturday night, Mississippi, has upset Georgia 25 to 17. Spire with eight catches, 158 yards. Now it's second down and six after the five yard penalty at the 14. And uh, Jim Street decides to uh, let Coy try it again. Oklahoma changing the defensive alignment, moving three linemen, three of their linebackers into the line to make it a 7 1. We have a big third and two coming up. We have a Western Union correction on the UCLA score. UCLA is in the lead, 23 to 7. So now it is third down and four. Eric to the far side. Jim Bertelson getting off the mark like a good quarter horse. Beautiful action on the counter play. That's the same backfield fake that set up the long pass to Spire. This is a drive that started at the Texas 32. 16 first downs for Texas, 16 for Oklahoma, number 16. Jim Street from Longview, Texas, a senior. First and goal from the seven. Worcester. You can see the face guard there yourself that time. The hand got across in front of Wooster, and the referee coming up from behind saw it also, and they gained two and a half more yards on the play. Personal foul, half the distance to the goal line, of course, as a face mask violation, the second against Oklahoma. So the ball is at the two and a half, still first down. Spire is back in, bud. He ran on the field as though there was nothing wrong with the ankle. <laughs> Fire at the right of your screen at the top. <laughs> Intended for Spire, Bruce Stensred has come up with another six point saving play. The last was against Spire, and let's, now again. Let's watch this one in slow motion. It's how close things can be in a football game. There's the little brush and Spire breaking to the outside. Stensred moving right with him. Spire has got him beat to the outside. The ball is underthrown slightly, and had he been able to pull it in there, it was clear sailing for 100 yards. Now it's third down. Goal to go. Ken Eric to the far side. And Bertelson thrown for a loss. We had some defensive charge that time. Number 43 for Oklahoma is Acock. And 76 is John Watson, and now it is fourth down for the Longhorns, and will they bring in Happy Feller, the field goal kicker? The last three years, this game has been decided by field goals. There have been nine field goals kicked in the last three years. We've already had two in this game thus far. From the 11 plus the 10 of the end zone, 21 yards on that acute angle again. Feller up, and Texas takes the lead. Well, we've had three goals here, three field goals kicked here in the third quarter. After a 14 to 14 halftime tie, you see the story now, Texas in the lead by three. And we've had only one punt in the third quarter. Three field goals, one punt. 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Members of the Texas Longhorn Band. Coach Chuck Fairbanks sends his three uh, good men deep, Bell, Marshall, and Steve Owens. And the last three that Feller has kicked have been deep, deep in the end zone with that following win. Two field goals by Happy Feller, one by Bruce Durr of Oklahoma. And the kick is long again, and Everett Marshall feels it for the touchback. So... Oklahoma comes out to the 20-yard line, first and 10. They trail by 3, 20 to 17, bud. The Oklahoma offense continues to move well on the ground, but their passing has not been very effective. I believe, as I mentioned a little while ago, that to move the ball, they will have to throw more on first and second down than they have done thus far. Jack Mildren, there's Steve Owen, 36, 106 yards. Mildren, number 11, the quarterback. And they stick uh, with their rushing game on first down. There is Chuck Fairbanks. First year at Oklahoma, 9-1 and one record. Orange Bowl win over Tennessee. Last year, 7-3. and three. 
has lost to Texas the last two years, 9 to 7, and last year, 26 20. And time has expired here in the third quarter. And at the end of the period, here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, the score Texas 20, Oklahoma 17. Register the octane of the gasoline you buy. Official records show the highest octane gasoline at any station is Sunoco 260. And Sunoco's custom blending pump blends this same 260 into all these other Sunoco gasolines. Each one gives you a piece of the action. Regular, thrifty middle premiums, and premium. You get the power you want at the price you want to pay. Prime with 260. Highest octane gasoline you can buy anywhere in the world. Get a piece of the action at Sunoco. When you stop at Sunoco, you go with confidence. George Hamilton and Lana Turner star in The Survivors, Monday on ABC. With the fourth quarter about to begin, these are the third quarter statistics. Oklahoma with the ball, second down and eight. At their own 22 as they trail, 20 to 17. Mildren hitting Steve Zabel, number 82 at about the 38-yard line. First down for the Sooners. Danny Lester on the tackle. And the key to the game is going to be the Oklahoma passing in this quarter, I believe. They had tried eight passes prior to the last one, but made only 28 yards passing against the 227 rushing. To the far side now, it is John Shelley, number 80, from the 38, first down. And Texas converging on Steve Owens. Leo Brooks was there, and Glenn Halsell, number 67. One of the other things that begin to play a part now in the game, it's been 90, 89 degrees, temperature falling a little bit, but still very hot. And you have to dig down into your soul for the pressure to keep moving. Right, but the right guard, Bill Elfstrom, who injured his ankle earlier, is in the ball game. The bell. Well, he drew a few long horns, didn't he? He challenged us all. <laughs> 84 was Tom Campbell. 42 was Mac McKinney. 23 was Lester. And with the ball now at the 44, it's a third down and four. Mildren has thrown 10 times. He has completed six for 48 yards. To the far side now is Shelley. The fullback, number uh, 40, Mike Harper. Owens, 36. Mildren. And Roy Bell pulls that one out of the air. A lot of misdirection on that one, as you could see. Mildred spun, started to the bottom of the screen, turned, threw back to his tight end, pardon me, to Bell, the halfback, who had swung through and curled over the middle. And the forward progress of the 45 of Texas. And, of course, a first down for Oklahoma. Texas leading 2017, 13-50 remaining in the game. Steve Owen. What a giant step. Let's watch it again in slow motion. You'll see the pattern that Texas has gone to on defense. They have everybody on the line to the tight side. But watch Owens' hurdle here. No daylight, and he went over the top. Texas is putting both linebackers up on the line to the tight end side, having the pursuit be from the short side. This time, they're staying fairly solidly in the 4-4. Oklahoma calls for time after a nine-yard gain by their star... At the 36, it'll be second and one. And with that time out here at the Cotton Bowl in the big day, Dallas, the score is Texas 
20, Oklahoma 17. To prove a point, I'm about to do something I wouldn't normally do. I'm going to shave without using any water. Nothing to make my beard wet and soft but this. Rise. Now watch. I'm actually getting a smooth, clean shave. Now the reason I'm getting such a clean shave is the moisture and rise. You see, shaving lather needs moisture, needs wetness. So your beard won't dry out beneath it. And you can't buy a lather that's wetter than rise. Slowly it seeps moisture into your beard and holds it there for as long as it takes you to shave. Now, if I can get a shave like this, using rise with no water, imagine what you can do using rise with water. On the grounds of the State Fair in Texas, this is the Cotton Bowl. 72,000, standing room only crowd for the 24th consecutive year, watching Oklahoma meet Texas. The Longhorns, number two ranked, the Sooners, number eight. The moment Texas is leading 20 to 17 with 13 minutes and 22 seconds left in the game, Oklahoma with a second down and one at the Texas 36. And here are the Sooners, Shelley to the near side. Mildred, the quarterback, going for the first down and has it. 71 is Leo Brooks, 61 is Scott Henderson, 67 Halsell, there Shelley 80, Mildred 11. So now with the ball at the 34, first and 10 for Oklahoma. Sable, set away from the line. Oklahoma stays on the ground. The outside handoff again to Bell. Sable doing a great job of blocking the outside linebacker, Richardson, who's moved up on the line of scrimmage with Halzo. On first down, Texas has an overshifted six with the two linebackers on the short side away from the tight end, Zabel. So let the ball at the 30. Oklahoma, second down and six. Texas leading. 20-17. Steve Owens again trying to uh, leap over. He now has 30 carries, 122 yards. Henderson helping on the tackle for the Longhorn defense at the 27. A gain of three. It'll be third down and three as we look at Little Red, the Oklahoma Indian. Markers down on the field is Steve Owens. Got the necessary yardage, but let's see what, about the penalty. Was it Oklahoma offside? Yes. And believe me, that's a very, very vital error. Instead of being first and ten, they've now got third and a long eight. At approximately the, the 33 of Texas, we have that much time, 11.58, remaining in the ball game. 14-14 at halftime. It is now 20 to 17, Texas leading. Oklahoma led in the first quarter, 14 to nothing. Zabel to the far side, Shelley opposite. In motion, Owen, and the ball goes to Fell, who gets to about the 28, bringing up a fourth down, and three is Greg Fletz. A junior from Sherman, Texas. Sherman being also the hometown of Miller Barber, the professional golfer. And we're going to get a field goal try here to see if we can once again get a tie game. Well, Bruce Durr kicked one from 22 and a half with about three minutes remaining in the third quarter to tie it up. Now he has an opportunity to do it again, but this one with the wind to his back, a 46 yard attempt. It's Long enough. The real clean agony of being unsuccessful on a three-pointer. 46-yard attempt to the near side of the upright. 
when we talk about mistakes, Chris, we usually think of fumbles, interceptions, that type of thing, but a penalty is an error, and that offside penalty was a very tough one. Some of the big games next Saturday, Penn State at Syracuse, Tennessee at Alabama, Iowa at Purdue, Oklahoma State at Missouri, and California UCLA. Guarantee you, the game of your choice. Bertelson moving the ball from the 20 for Texas. Kevin Grady uh, joined by Steve Castile on the tackle. Getting about three yards, we would estimate. And the pressure begins to mount if the Texas offense can maintain possession, grind it out here. The clock's running. It'd be hard for Oklahoma to get it geared again. The strong piece fired a split in. And Kevin Grady, number 75, was not fooled. Joined on the play by the monster man, Jim Files, number 84. And there you get a look at the side. Look at number 76, John Watson, 6'5. Listed uh, the program as 219. I'd like to have ten dollars for every pound over 219 that he weighs. And you can see the wind blowing the Oklahoma jerseys. If they can force Texas to punt on fourth down, Texas, Oklahoma will have reasonably good field position. Double flankers fire to the bottom of the screen. Okay, third down and seven. Into the wind. He lost it out there, and it's intercepted by Joe Pierce. He's been a defensive star today. And now, Haycock helps Bertelson up. The pass was intended for Bertelson, and uh, the Zoomers now are booming a little more. The third interception by the Oklahoma defense. Oklahoma has the ball at its own 44-yard line. First down and 10, Texas leading 20 to 17. Rick Baldridge is the fullback, number 42. Owens, 36. Bell, 35. And they power eye. Marker down. Owens throwing a block, and Mildred gets the, across midfield. No one uh, jumped offside, but the left side of the Oklahoma line lined up offside. Uh, the guard and the tackle were ahead of the ball. I believe that that's the same thing that happened uh, previously when they got the offside penalty to nullify the first down. A procedure penalty, which is five yards, bringing the ball back to the 39, where it'll be first down and 15 for the Sooners. 9.55 to go. The sixth penalty against Oklahoma, and none thus far against Texas. Mendel Hall, number 50, coming out over the ball. Mildred, the sophomore. The sophomore Roy Bell. Mike Campbell. And on the stop, let's see, at about the 42, a gain of three. So it'll be second down and 12 here in Texas. And I believe that Mildred felt that Texas would be rushing the passer, and the quick handoff might break past them. Steve Zabel goes incomplete. Mac McKinney, 42, and Lester, 23, covered uh, in the secondary with that much time, 9.19 to go in the ball game. It brings up a third down and 12 for the Sooners. And they trail by three points. This is the time where you dig deep for the one long yardage play that you've been practicing all week. Bill Atessis, number 80, is Bill Zapalak, whose father is one of the Texas coaches, gets in, and the Sooners are thrown for a loss. Back to the 34, loss of eight. It's fourth down and 20. 8.54 to go. Punting now, Oklahoma. Anticipating is Cotton Spire, number 88. Monty Johnson, left-footed to punt. Beauty. Oh, beauty. Fire at the 16. It's 
fire back to the 20. You know, Chris, he catches the ball so well on his passes that he has a little trouble seemingly on the punts. Johnson with a 46-yard punt, bud. That's the Hollis, Oklahoma native who quarterback for Bud Wilkinson, the Sooners, Daryl Royal, the Texas coach, who last week won his 100th game as head coach at Texas. That eight minutes looks long to him and very short to Coach Fairbanks. From the 20, Jim Street. And battling Steve Worcester, number 30, Vince La Rosa and Bruce Stensred on the tackle. Oh, that was a battling first down by Worcester. Coming out to about the 31, first down. Texas leading 20 to 17, 818 to go in the game. Ken Airy is put to the far side. La Rosa finally made the tackles. Castile first hit street. And Oklahoma continuing to vary the defensive alignment from the 4-4 to the 6-2, and that time the overshift to the bottom of your screen. So at the 32, it'll be second down and nine for Texas. 7.45 to go. Bertelson. Stensrud is 17. 81 is Qualls. 84 is Files. And uh, they allow four yards, or make it two yards, rather, to the 34. So it'll be third down and seven, Texas. Uh, showing seven minutes now and 16 seconds. This is a big third down play from Oklahoma's standpoint. They need the ball. Spire, 88, is in the lineup now, split to the near side of the field at the bottom of your screen. On third and seven from their own 34. That was that flanker around play. They had, it, they had it defensed awfully well, but putting Spire in that open field, he finds daylight very quickly. And that brings up a fourth down for the Longhorns. Oklahoma will get their hands on the ball. Fourth down with the ball at the 39. Fourth down and two. Scooter Munzingo will do the punting. Back deep now is King, number 21. King has it. Oh, a loose ball. Bob McKay flying there. Number 62 recovers for Texas at the Oklahoma 23. A little bit of an experience. The front back dropping back, signaling fair catch, and then getting his eyes off the ball. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Two outfielders. He was blinded just a little bit. King not able to hold the ball. Stensrud trying to get up to it, but nothing but orange jerseys there as Texas recovers. King ahead of him, Stensrud, uh, early signaling for a fair catch. King uh, handling the ball, and King has really had a workout today, bud. They've been throwing in his area on defense, and now a tough break for King on this pass play. Oklahoma, of course, needs to dig in here and force Texas at least to attempt the field goal. That would still have victory within Oklahoma's reach. Right. And there you see Daryl Royal. You think he's nervous. I think Edith Royal, his wife, is just as nervous. She's at home in Austin watching, and here is Chuck Fairbanks. And he's wondering how in the world can he misplay a punt mm -hmm. that badly. There's a punt that went 38 yards. Now with the ball at the 23, the Oklahoma 23. It's first down for Texas. They lead 20 to 17, 625 left in the game. And Bertelson. Sure tackle by the monster man, Jim Files, a senior from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Texas changing the pace from the triple option to the belly play, which is a hard driving straight ahead type offense. 
But uh, looking ahead, speaking of Arkansas, we'll uh, be televising the Texas-Arkansas game from Fayetteville December 6th, coast to coast. Spire back in the game going to the top of the screen. Watch how Pierce is playing him on defense now. Right on the line of scrimmage on his inside shoulder. Second and seven. Mm. Bertelson, number 75, a fine play, Kevin Grady, joined by Castile. And the ball is at the 18, so it'll be third down and five. Total yards thus far, Texas 331, Oklahoma 276. And the field goal has made the difference. Now with a third and five. Weekend centering the ball to Jim Street of Longview. Worcester driving hard. Let's watch it again in slow motion. I believe that's the last play Oklahoma expected. They were looking for the outside triple option. There's the handoff, and you can see the fake. Marvelous blocking by the Texas line as the Oklahoma men are moving to the outside, expecting Street to have kept the ball. Worcester driving, driving to the seven-yard line. 17 carries for Worcester, 62 yards. Marker is down as Bertelson rolls into the end zone. Was not officially in, but let's let's watch for the penalty. Bertelson, number 35, Coy 24, offside. Very little doubt about what to do here, Chris. <laughs> Offside against the defense, defining, of course, the penalty. It brings up a second and goal, and the ball is at the Oklahoma one. Texas leading 20 to 17, 444 to go. Eric 45 to the left. Worcester getting in for the TD. A marker is down. Going 23 yards in five plays. Worcester scoring the touchdown. Putting the Longhorns ahead 26 to 17 as they recovered a king fumble to start this series at the Oklahoma 23. Is happy feller now. We'll try the point after. Penalty against Oklahoma. Needless to say, decline. That's Donnie Wigginton holding the ball. Good. It all started in 1869. Now each week it's college football on ABC. The score, Texas 27, Oklahoma 17. These are killers. Battery killers. Their weapons, flashlights and toys. So EverReady created a battery that's harder to kill. The new EverReady Super 99 gives twice the energy of ordinary batteries in the standard heavy-duty test for only a few pennies more. Super 99, the battery that doesn't know when to quit. That's power to spare from the EverReady powerhouse. Ever ready. When you want a battery that's not... Pat Hernan here at the Union Carbide Laboratories, where the big news in antifreeze is the new antileak formula for Prestone. Scientists have developed the one antileak formula good enough for Prestone, America's number one brand. You can get the new antileak formula in the famous can or this new plastic handy jug. Now science makes Prestone protection better than ever. Get Prestone antifreeze with the new antileak formula. Texas capitalizing on an Oklahoma fumble, 23 yards, five plays, Worcester scoring as we look at 35 bell. 24 is Marshall. Steve Owens is deep, also awaiting Happy Feller's kick. 27 to 17. 440 left in the ball game. Oklahoma looking at it. Everett Marshall. It is a touchback, and Oklahoma now gets the ball at their own 20. First down. And it really helps you to have someone can put that ball in the end zone the way Feller does. Right, and he did it into the wind, which, uh, as Butt pointed out in the southwest, dies down a little later on in the afternoon. Texas has had the ball 66 snaps, Oklahoma 67. Jack Milton, number 11. 
and he throws on first down. Shelley gets the ball. Not quite enough for the first down, and that was a point Bud Wilkinson made uh, quite some time ago that they should be throwing on first down. Let's watch the play again. Shelley starting down the field, and he's very well covered here, but it's a perfect throw and also a perfect catch. Watch the orange jerseys as he goes up for the ball. Four of them closing, but a perfect strike for the first down. Second down and inches. There's the Oklahoma first down by Roy Bell, number 35, Brooks on the tackle. Number 71 is Brooks, who is 6'6 six, six and weighs 244. About four minutes to go in the ball game. Texas in the lead, 27 to 17. Shelley of Oklahoma to the far side. Bell is a flanker now at the bottom of your screen. Ooh, and the ball takes off and is intercepted by number 84, Campbell. Tom Campbell, one of the twins, comes up with a big play. And that was the big play, Chris. So one of the things I think we ought to note is that uh, Oklahoma's rushing has been very successful. And when you say should pass, they've gained 222 yards rushing. Texas in their first three games allowed their opponents an average of only 64 yards rushing per game. So Oklahoma's rushing was going well enough that certainly they were sensible to be staying with it. And as they were running out of time to move more to the pass. So from the 33, Billy Dale, the junior from Odessa, Texas. Rambles for more Texas yardage. Bonnie Johnson makes the tackle as you see at about the 21 yard line. 11 yard run. First down, Texas. And it's amazing when the tide shifts how rapidly it runs. That's right. Immediately following our telegast, college football today, all the scores of other games played around the country. We hope you'll watch it. Ted Coy. The third member of the Coy family to play for the Longhorns. Dad Coy, Ernie Coy, then along Ernie Jr. And now Ted as Grady makes the tackle at the 16-yard line. It'll be second and five now. An opportunity to thank Coach Chuck Fairbanks, his staff, Athletic Director Gomer Jones, and John Keith, the Sports Information Director at Oklahoma. Dale stopped at the 15. 44 on top is Castile. And uh, at the bottom was number 75, Kevin Grady. And also, our appreciation to coach and athletic director Daryl Royal, his staff, and Jones Ramsey, sports information director of Texas, for all their fine cooperation. So now it's a third down and four from the 15, with two minutes and 22 seconds left. And Ted Coy. First time that they've uh, run the cross buck play with the halfback going across to the opposite side against the double flow of the fullback and halfback. Texas has rushed for 143 yards, with 112 of it coming in the second half. And the reason for that, of course, is Cotton Spire, Oklahoma, had to loosen up their coverage a little bit on him in the second half. Now it's first and goal for Texas from the eight. Number 22, Billy Dale, carried the football. Castillo and La Rosa on the tackle at about the six-yard line, where it'll be second and goal, and we have less than two minutes. Texas capitalizing on a fumble. Went ahead by 10 after leading by three on a field goal by Feller. And now they have intercepted Oklahoma. And Street. One of the tri-captains to about the five, where it'll be third and goal. And you can see that both teams are playing just as hard as they were on the opening play of the game. One of the things you're always telling your men is don't know what the score is as far as the intensity of your play is concerned. Texas coming into this ball game on a 12-game winning streak. Ranked number two in the country. Going against eighth-ranked Oklahoma. Third and goal from the five. Marker is down. Junior Billy Dale carried the ball. 
going to be a fourth down, Chris, so they'll undoubtedly refuse it, not wanting to give them more seconds. A procedure penalty against Texas defined by Oklahoma. Oklahoma, a team that got out to a 14 to nothing lead with Texas to bounce back with two touchdowns with a tie score at halftime. 14 all at the end of the third quarter Texas led 20 to 17. This is an interesting situation. Texas could go for the field goal here but if they do not make the touchdown they'll have Oklahoma in worse field position. All right fourth down from the four. And Billy Dale did not get into the Oklahoma end zone. La Rosa and Castile on the tackle. The ball goes over to Oklahoma with 37 seconds left in this game. Let's watch it again in slow motion. This is the little item of pride that you're searching for all the time. Oklahoma obviously can't win. They're 10 points behind, but watch the intensity of the defensive play. Number 81 coming to the outside. The Oklahoma defensive end, Quayle, turning it to the inside, and then look at that contact along the goal line. Now from the one yard line, uh, the Sooners, Mildred, Bell, Harper, and Owens in the backfield. Mildred, look out to Steve Owens. Owens trying his very best, coming out to the 17 yard line. Mike Campbell makes the tackle on number 36. Heisman Trophy candidate Steve Owens, who uh, gained 124 yards today on 31 carries. As we have a timeout at Dallas, Texas, the score, Texas 27, Oklahoma 17. If you're about to buy your first new car, here's a fact. The resale value of General Motors cars is traditionally higher. What trade do you have? Like, like, like new. Oh, is that it? Come on. That means when you trade, you get more of your investment back. That's not a claim. That's a fact, and it's one reason why. More people who start with this mark stay with this mark. Car after car. Stop. Hold it. Don't let this happen to you. Now, for a limited time, Goodyear offers the Sure Grip Winter Tire plus safety spikes for extra grip on ice, both for this special low price. That's right, this great Goodyear Sure Grip Tire with metal safety spikes, both at this special Goodyear price. But hurry, the offer ends Saturday, October 18th. Oklahoma with a first down, 23 seconds left in the game. Texas leading 27 to 17. And but after 17 years on the sideline here, coaching the Sooners and having such a fine record against Texas, it's a little different up here in the broadcast booth, is it not? Well, I don't think there's any game that has any more intensity than this one. The players on both sides are looking forward to it always. They know what the game means to their season. They know what it means to the tradition of the school. You know, Harry Duvall, the uh, football writer for the Football News, said this. To me, college football is like my French wife. Eternally young, effervescent, never aging, but evolving into something different. Always challenging, but ever beautiful in my mind. Yeah! And Jack Mildren, the Oklahoma quarterback, bringing it out for about four yards to the 21. And Leo Brooks makes the tackle. 16 seconds left on the clock. And I believe unofficially that's Oklahoma's last timeout. What a rivalry, bud. This is our first opportunity, though we've uh, sat in the stands here and watched this game before, but the first time we've televised one in these years. And now I know what they mean when they say uh, Oklahoma against Texas in the Cotton Bowl. It's a tremendous game. Well, you have to give uh, Texas great credit for keeping their poise. They're a veteran team when you jump off 14 to nothing behind as quickly as they did it's quite easy to lose your game plan and to panic a little bit but Texas stayed right with it Oklahoma however has improved a little bit defensively and except for a couple of bad mistakes chiefly the fumbled punt this game would have gone right down to the wire all right 16 seconds Oklahoma with a second down and six Mildred being chased by David Arley the sophomore 
from Richardson, Texas. They're counting off the seconds here on the giant cotton ball clock. And there it is. A 27 to 17 victory for the favored Longhorns of the University of Texas. And Darrell Royal now has won his 11th victory since being head coach at Texas over Oklahoma with two losses. We'll repeat the final score. Texas 27, Oklahoma 17, as we'll return in a moment. Istanbul. I mean, uh, New York. Be the train on the track. Take the bus off your back. Leave the gang way behind. Out of sight, out of mind. Get away, right away, like today. For once in a lifetime, get into this world. And now the eyes of Texas. Let's listen. victory for the University of Texas Longhorns here at the Cotton Bowl in the 63rd renewal of this neighboring state battle that'll go on for years. We hope you enjoyed the action here on a cloudy warm afternoon in Dallas. Once again the final score Texas 27 Oklahoma 17. The executive producer of NCAA football is Rune Arley. The Oklahoma Texas game was produced by Chuck Howard and directed by Andy Sedaris. Associate producer Jim Feeney, technical director John Allen. Stay tuned now for all the scores and highlights of today's top games. And next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's Lou Alcindor's regular season NBA debut as the Milwaukee Bucks play host to the Detroit Pistons in their first NBA game of the 69-70 season. That's at 2.30, 3.30 Central Time. Immediately following ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's NCAA football's Game of the Week as the California Bears tackle the UCLA Bruins from the Los Angeles Coliseum in Los Angeles. Our thanks to our spotter, Bill Friel, our statistician, Jerry Capstone. And now this is Chris Shankle along with Bud Wilkinson and Bill Fleming saying so long from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. In this centennial year, watch NCAA college football each week on ABC. Today's game has been brought to you live and in color by Pan Am, the world's most experienced airline, the airline that makes the going great. By Crestone Antifree, now with new anti-leak formula, available in the famous red can or new plastic candy jug. By the cars with the General Motors, Mark of Excellence, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, Opal. And by Sunoco. People in the know, people on the go are moving to Sunoco. If you stop at Sunoco, you go with confidence. This has been an ABC Television Network Sports Presentation.
A charge of jury tampering interrupts the trial of a racketeer and sends Inspector Erskine investigating in tomorrow night's drama of the FBI. Then take a fantastic voyage through the human body in a science fiction thriller starring Stephen Boyd and Raquel Welch on the Sunday night movie on ABC.